arts and crafts for race car drivers up next on this next episode of behind the wheel YouTube, it is Sunday, uh, the 1st of November, 2020. It's 3.04 p.m., and we are back here at Kaboom Studios. It's a sunny, sunny, beautiful day here in Los Angeles. I hope that everyone is having a fantastic day. It's the day after Halloween. I'm sure everyone's probably sugar-shocked and uh, freaked out from all the ghouls and ghosts that visited your doorstep, hopefully. I just talked to my niece and nephew, and I didn't. I think they may have done a little bit of a trick or treating, um, you know, with what's going on in the world these days. I'm not sure how much trick or treating went on last night, but at least uh, my two little, my two little crazies had some fun. Uh, I hope everyone else who has kids, or if you're a kid yourself, you had some awesome times last night, uh, gathering candy and scaring the living shit out of everyone in the neighborhood. <laughs> uh, so we are back here today in the world of Gran Turismo, and uh, let's take a look and see. Well, today's episode is going to be a livery creation episode because I don't think there's, I still don't think they've, yeah, there's no, there's no, uh, there, there seems to be no plans for a next race. Um, I, I am still in the mode where I'm, I don't want to ding my, uh, ding my safety rating nor do, nor do I want to ding my um my driver rating any much more than I've already done this season so I'm gonna try to just stay away from um the daily races <laughs> uh Jared Freeman longtime um fan and member of the channel and friend of the channel uh said that he knocked 700 points off of his daily rating racing or daily or his driver rating score just driving daily races in for one like night so um i'm taking that as a cautionary tale just to say no and just do livery design until they announce the next season and if they don't then we're going to just have to force ourselves to do some daily races i don't think i mean i we, there's too much time between now and gran turismo 7 for them to not do any more fia races um, and especially with what's going on in the world with kind of the limited racing that is going on, I think um, FIA, FIA could um, use whatever racing they've got to to kind of exploit at this point to, to keep their audience. Um, I noticed that you know a lot of a lot of the i racing leagues and uh, other other all the other like official racing leagues that do uh, virtual racing are really kind of, on the rise now because uh, you know no one can really go out and enjoy motorsports anymore. Um, that might not be the case for America because I mean the only motorsport that we really observe here is NASCAR, and I'm not trying to say that NASCAR isn't a motorsport. You know, I grew up in Virginia. I I went to college down the street from Richmond International Raceway. I've been to my fair share of you know NASCAR races. Um, and I've done my fair share of watching NASCAR and I still, to this day, will still click on NASCAR because, you know, why not? <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't just knock, uh, NASCAR for, for going around in a circle. They do, they do go around in a circle incredibly, um, fast amounts of speed. Um, they do really close racing. Uh, it's just the hockey of racing and you have to kind of look at it that way. I mean... You know, who cares if a bunch of rednecks will, I, you know, if you don't like rednecks and, you know, that's, that's your problem. <laughs> you know, I grew up with rednecks and I'm a brown guy. I like rednecks just fine, man. I consider myself a little bit of a redneck. So, um, so I like NASCAR, you know, I, I don't, I can't, yeah, I can't knock that. You know, I don't, it's not my favorite form of racing, but I'll, you know, I'll watch it. You know, it's entertaining enough. <laughs> But uh, what we're going to do today, 
and probably until we can start doing practice lobbies again is we're going to just work on liveries because I don't, you know, I will, like, like I said, I've said before, not many people do livery videos and I'm not sure it's, if it's because they just want to focus on racing or if they just, they just don't feel confident in working in the livery editor. Um, I don't know what the case is either way. I'm going to, I'm going to try to blaze the way for us livery editors that also, you know, race, but also like to create stuff in the game. So what we've been working with, just because I found one, and, and I liked working with, we, we built, I don't know if you tuned into the first episode of my attempt to do kind of livery videos, but we built uh, Jared um, a uh, custom race car for his car because I had noticed that he, he, didn't have, he didn't have a livery. Test, 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 test. Okay. I'm having problems with audio again. Give me a second. Check, check, check. Okay. That sounds that sounds better. I, I can't deal with bad audio. Anyways. <laughs> uh um, we built him a car and and uh we had a lot of fun. Uh and the one thing that I really loved about doing his car is that it's it's a, he's the attendants have way more um real estate to create it's a it's a bigger palette to create on let's put it that way um and it's it's way bigger of a palette than i i get with the porsche so it gives me it gives me the designer a, a really huge um advantage as far as like what what type of design i want to set up um because i can do whatever i want i mean i've got so much space to work with that that i can i can pull off designs that i probably that that, that are way more challenging on the porsches um, uh, so what we're doing is we're, uh, yesterday we, d we decided, at least I decided that I wanted to build a camel, a camel themed car. Uh, oh, and I'm going to preface this once again with saying that I do smoke. Um, whether or not that, that changes your opinion of me or not, that's between you and your conscious. But, um, I smoke, I don't like it. I just, I do it. It's been something I've been doing since college. I blame art school for it and all the late nights I had to spend up, um, smoking and working on projects. Uh, but uh, I, I smoke camels. Um, and what I was noticing in, in the livery store is that there's a plethora, a plethora of Marlboro cars, but there aren't many camel cars out there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the Atenza, as you see, we've already kind of given it uh, the camel color, the camel tannish that the cigarette packs are. Let's um, let's take a look at one of those. So what we're looking at is this this uh, these two on the right hand side, the white the one on the left is are the um, the lights or what they call blues now. And what I know is camel, camel uh, filters that they call like the full flavor ones or what, I don't know what they call them anymore. Anyhow, uh, this is the kind of, kind of the design aesthetic we're going for here. Uh, we've got this kind of tannish color and then this maroon and uh, it's bordered with gold. Now the logo itself is blue with the silver outline, which is what we have on our car, uh, as far as uh, the actual manufacturer's logo. We'll probably work some white in there because you see back there, there's, there's kind of a gradient of white in there. So maybe we'll get to have a chance to work with the gradient. I've never actually worked with the gradient uh, shape before. So we're gonna kind of give that a whack and see how that works out. Maybe we can get this like sunburst See this? I, I don't think you see my my mouse on um, OBS, but there's this kind of sunburst effect that's happening behind the the camel logo um, that we're gonna try to try to mimic as well. Maybe we'll, I, right now I've got the hood set up for for the actual main kind of logo and and uh, iconography that that camel uses for all of their products. 
uh, with the camel and, you know, the pyramids and stuff in the back. And uh, most of the camel cars that I've run into have been, like, camel trophy cars, which are, or trucks. Which are trucks, you know, they're, they're off-road trucks. I, camel did a lot of uh, off-road racing. Uh, they had a few cars. I think they may have an, I think they had an F1 car at one point. But truthfully, you know, Johnny Player and, uh, and Marlboro kind of had that whole territory blocked off. Camel, I think, had a LMP1 car at one point in time when, you know, cigarette companies could, could, uh, sponsor cars. Uh, but most of the stuff that they, they, they kind of got involved with were, uh, were off-road races. And that makes sense because they're supposed to be a quote unquote Turkish brand. And, you know, they, um, they're in, <laughs> I guess, you know, there's a lot more sand and off-road stuff in, in, in that part of the world. So, you know, it kind of makes sense that they did off-road racing more than they did on-road racing. Um, so we, we want to kind of, because, and also not to mention some of the camel, the camel liveries really, there really wasn't much to it. It was just a yellow car with a camel, the camel logo on it. Uh, not very hard to do, not very hard to pull off. Uh, it doesn't make for, I mean, you could, if you want to be historically accurate, then yeah, it would be, it'd be a cool livery, but in the sense of design, it's really kind of boring. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to try to slam it together with, Something like this, uh, the Porsche Martini uh, racing logo. And I'm, what I'm kind of pulling from this is all of these sports stripes, like this this bendy sports stripe that happens on the side, which is a lot like in um, the sports stripe that I normally put, which is a kind of a, 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 a diagonal line that goes from uh, the front wheel to the back that kind of you know, widens as it goes to the back of the car. We could probably pull something like this off. I've been looking at a bunch of other Martini designs like this one. These are probably all model cars that someone's built. Um, I would like to think that this is probably a garage somewhere, but I, the more I look at the picture, it looks like something um, that a model builder built. Plus, I recognize like two or three of the models in here, so... I'm pretty sure these are models, but um, nonetheless, they still give us kind of a, a, a starting design or a starting, uh, a starting marker for uh, a good sense of what, what, you know, the martini look is. What I really like, if you look at that Lancia that's in the center and uh, the, that Ford F2000, I can't remember what the name, I think that's the Ford F2000. And um, the other Lancia that's right next to it, the the stripes going from the headlights that go that are kind of like an isosceles triangle that go from the headlights and then pinch in toward the A pillar. I think I'm definitely going to steal that. Um, I'm going to try to incorporate that and the uh, the swooshiness of the side line. I don't think I'm going to do the lines down the middle because we have the camel logo running down the middle and we want to do that whole thing uh with you know the the, the whites the white like kind of burst in the uh in on behind the camel logo um and that's going to be kind of hard to to work with the line the sports stripes and this is going to make it look way too busy so um what i kind of have planned for the roof is to to, to make to put the full camel uh iconography or logo on the on the roof um because we can't fit it on on our our hood because of uh the air dams and stuff that are or the air exhaust areas that are on the hood of the Atenza. um it has the real estate for it but we just can't fit it there because there's a huge uh huge uh, I guess it's the space for the intercooler exhaust to come out or the intercooler to cool itself up whatever you want to say you know the air vent let's put it that way uh, so we'll probably try to put that on the roof somewhere uh, another martini car that I was another martini Porsche that I was looking at was this one I like once again that swooshy line I don't like it as much as as this one 
Like I like the, I definitely like that side swooshy line way, way better on this car than I do on, on this car. This one just, it just looks a little too blocky, but I do kind of like, you know, I like where it's, I like, it's still kind of like the same theme. Uh, so I think the best place for us to start now, now that we've got the, uh, the color down and, and kind of the hood worked out. I want to try to start working on the, the triangle, the triangle, uh, stripes that work on um, their way that are wide at where the headlights are and then, um, decrease by the time they get to the A pillar. Let's take a look at how they do that though. First, let's see. Oh wait, sorry. You're hearing double of me right now. No, I'm going to turn it back on because we're going to switch back over here. Give me a second. So these look like they go, they end right at the A pillar right there. I mean, on all three cars, they kind of end right there at the A pillar. I kind of like this one in the middle, this Lancia that's in the middle. So maybe we'll start with a very large triangle that goes up. It goes up into that A pillar. So let's, let's take a look at what we've got to work with here. Uh, I would imagine that's going to be a decal that I'm going to have to put on the roof. Maybe let's, let's see how it handles this. We might, yeah, we might have to start here from the roof because I don't think that's a side parameter or a side, uh, this, this might actually work. If we do put this here. Okay. Yeah. It's treating that part of the car as the hood or the roof. So what's going to be tough is that we're going to have to continue this onto the onto the, the hood there. Let's see if we can't finagle this thing just a tiny bit. I hope everyone's having a good day. And my neighbors were going crazy last night, dude. It was like mayhem. All out bedlam outside. I thought we were supposed to be on lockdown, man. These people are like... These people just done lost their minds, man. So... doing well I could always get it to work I can always mask that because I don't want this white stuff that's showing up around the headlight I just want it to um, that might work see what I'm trying to do here too is I'm also trying to get this to fill up and kind of match and that little nub of white that's just beyond um, I wish, like I said, I, I wish I had a pointer to point out what I'm talking about. Um, let's see. Let me just make, oh, whoops. There we go. Sorry. I'm having to switch between audio channels whenever I go between uh, oh, shit, the PlayStation and uh, all my example photos. And I just forget to shut down the channel sometimes. I mean, that might work. The problem is, is that it's not... Let's see if we can get edge it. What I'm trying to get it to do is I want it to be fully on that. Well, I guess I'm not going to be able to do that because as soon as... As soon as I get into that territory, I mean, I could probably just mask that. But you see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to match the actual edge of that that headlight. I mean, that's probably close enough for government work. I mean, what would be cool is also too, is if I can do it just on this side here, but I, I kind of want to, I like the idea that they, they end 
I mean, nothing like I said is set in stone with these designs. This might be a more, this might be a longer video because I've never done the type of striping work that this is going to involve. So, so what I can do, what I can do is, let's see if I can, all of that spill over on the front grill and the bumper there, we'll just cover that with a, another shape. And like I said, that little bit that's spilling over onto that A pillar right there, we'll fix that too. And we're not going to just let it go. We're just not that type of person. So, I just want to get make the most out of, I wonder if I skew it, if that will work too. And once again, I'm not really worried about trying to match this on the other side, because once I, once I pump it into the, uh, into the old layer, layer tools, I can just duplicate it. That's not a big deal. Now, the real big challenge is going to be able to match this triangle with the hood decal that we're going to have to use. So let, let's just give this a uh, just a, a color right now. Let's just assign it a color. I, th I think that maroon actually might be close to what we want. That's probably closer. I hate. I hate that I can just look over at a pack of camel filters to see that I'm wrong, but those look pretty close. I'm looking at actual, <coughs> and an actual pack of cigarettes right now, though, to color match. But that looks pretty right on right there. That's pretty dang close. So. I mean, we might have to live with that right there, like being, but just the more that I mess with this triangle, the harder it becomes to, to try to control the constraints for the shape. I mean, that looks, that looks close enough right there. So let's try to match that on the hood. I really do like the the amount of, of space I get to work with the Atenza. Uh, let's let's see how this this decal behaves first before we decide on um, the projection method. If it starts misbehaving, then we'll we'll make it align to camera. But I think I think we'll be okay with it aligning to the surface because we kind of want it to wrap around the surface. So we want it to fill kind of like that, but then we want it to also not be as big. Ooh, this might be easier than I thought. We just do that. Just get the angle right. That's pretty, that's pretty right on. All right, let's give it, let's give it that maroon color. Once again, use your color history, folks, because you don't want to be off color-wise. All right, that's that's a pretty good beginning. Let me let me fix just so I can get a full sense of what's going on here. I'm gonna start my fixing right now. Let's see. That's probably the front of the car. I, I, I really do kind of miss racing, guys. I, I, I'm, as much as I really want to race right now, I just I just don't feel comfortable doing it in in the practice and the daily lobbies. Say what you will about courage. I'm just not being that courageous right now as far as sacrificing driver's rating, driver's score. So it's doing that kind of thing. So let's see if we can't get it to 
this is the tricky part is I don't know if I'm going to be able to cover all of that just because of the way that this is this the car is handling decals see it doesn't want me it doesn't want to really give me that I mean I could probably force it to but it looks like there's a portion of that headlight that it wants to treat as the hood or as the roof so we're going to do the best that we can that might even be treating it as part of the side of it's really tough to figure out whether or not what what Gran Turismo is trying to do as far as like accepting shapes on certain surfaces I know I've said that before but it's the truth it's it's really it's really tricky sometimes and it takes just a lot of patience and and some effort Ooh, okay I think I can nail it here with the side I might not even need that piece that I put on the front let's see if we can get it covered oh yeah look look it's covering it with a side but it's still wanting to treat that little tiny bit as the roof but that's fine we're trying to be once again oh wrong color we're trying to be economical with with how many decals we're using because I don't know how many decals I'm going to need in order to pull this design off. <laughs> let's uh, let's address that A pillar as well. Uh, we could probably no, don't cancel the end. Finish editing layer. Uh, another tool that you have here too is add a layer above. Um, it doesn't really matter in this sense because. Uh, all these other la these tan layers um, are on the other s are on a different part of the car. What it does matter with is the um, that maroon layer. So we want to make sure that it is above that maroon layer, and it is. So let's see if we can't get the A pillar covered in fashion that isn't going to mess too much at, or at all. We don't want it to touch that. We don't want it to touch that part of the car at all. So let's continue to make it bigger and see if we can not get this one shape to cover everything that we want it to cover. I know there are probably better shapes to do this with, but I kind of just like working with the basic shapes because they have a lot less that might be the closest I can get. Fuck. But it's still... You little bastard. You're still... Wanting to show me that little tiny bit of maroon that's there. Okay. A little tiny bit of maroon. is going to be the bane of my existence. I'm going to, I might have to come in with a special... Deckle just to cover that little fucking thing. But well, let's see what type of coverage we can get with this first. And if it bugs us enough, then we can just we figure out another way or just... No, nope, didn't quite cover it. <laughs> All right, we can work with that. Let's see if we can't get it to, to do everything. Ah, that's, that's close enough. I'm happy with that. So, let's take this. Duplicate and reverse. We're not going to see the changes. And duplicate and reverse because it's the same color as the car. Finishing on there. Oh, shit. I think we just made... I think I just... I think we have made too many layers. When in doubt, use the duplicate and then skip. Which I think we talked about earlier. So skip and then duplicate this one. That's our next layer. If your car doesn't flip around, then it means that you're not duplicating a layer that you're supposed to be. If you're doing it this way. Uh, which I don't know of any other way you can do it with, without messing it up really. But it'll always be 
the layer underneath. So it's going to be this layer. That's covering that. And then we're going to duplicate and reverse. And like I said, it, doing it this way, it also will help you organizational wise because it'll help you kind of figure out, give, it'll give you landmarks for where each one of these shapes are sitting in your design. Um, because you'll run into instances, the more, the more complicated the design, the more you're going to have to like worry about where parts of your design are and how many um, layers you're using. So we're going to duplicate that in reverse. All right, that gave us that. And it looks like it's everything is working very cleanly right now. I'm, and then we'll duplicate that on this on reverse. And that should, oh, see? Oh, you know what? Because we did, we did the wrong layer. See, it just, it just duplicated the same thing. So we're gonna just go ahead and erase that layer. Then we're gonna go to the hood because that's the layer that we want. And we wanna duplicate on that reverse. And the layer control is duplicate and reverse. Boom. All right, there we go. We have our two border, our two border stripes from the headlight that kind of, we might even be able to run that whole mot motif all the way up the A pillar and maybe we can make it meet with our sports stripes in the back, but I don't want to, I don't want to get that far just yet. I want to see what happens with the sports stripes and how we can get the sports stripes on the side to uh, behave the way we want them to, which is kind of swoosh from uh, kind of where this opening here is for, I'm guessing, brake venting. Uh, it looks like it's treating it's treating the the spoiler and the the front splitter and all of the arrow on the sides as a separate piece uh, because it's still white. Um, so we'll we'll deal with that once we get to that that level. I think maybe even. Now that we've got, now that we have that, that part of the design done, let's try to manipulate. Let's, I hope maybe we can color that grill so it's not silver. What would be cool is we can get it to be that maroon color. Maybe. Let's see if we change other to that maroon color, what else is it going to change? Oh, so it doesn't look like. I mean that actually kind of looks nice for the uh, for the arrow there. So maybe we'll. I don't know though because the stripes are going to probably be that maroon color. So let's just keep that white for now. It doesn't look like we can affect the color of the grill, so we're just going to have to live with that silver. I mean I don't mind it, but it would be cool if we didn't have to deal with it. Okay, well. <clears throat> Let's try to get on with making the stripies more stripy. You know what? First, I want to I want to see if we can't. I want to take a look at this. I want to see if we can't get that that burst effect behind the camel. Behind the camel logo there. So let's try to do that first. Maybe we should make the triangle. A little bit more exaggerated. I like it just coming straight from the headlights, though. I'm, af I'm afraid that if we go over the headlights, it's gonna, you know, more right of the headlights. Where see how the headlight cutout ends there? I mean, that would be the other place I would end it. I mean, that could be cool too. Let's take a look, because I kind of want. Now that I'm looking at it, I kind of want that triangle to be a little bit more extreme, right? I mean, it's symmetric right now with the headlights, and I like that. So we know that we can control that shape to a point where we can we can get it to not spill over too much on other parts of the car. We'll just we'll just have to get 
really crafty with our, our masking. So let's just try this. And if we don't like it, I'll show you how you can, you can change it back very quickly and easily. I do like that though. We're gonna have to mask it. I do kind of like that because then we get this curve, this nice curve out of the, out of the, out of the, uh, this part of the body. So let's see if we can't get it to work. Let's see if we can't get it to work to our favor here. Let's see here. I really can't wait till we get back to racing. I was watching Senna last night or this morning. I don't know if you guys ever seen Senna. It's like one of the best racing documentaries ever made. Um, not to mention Ayrton Senna is probably one of my favorite drivers of all time. Yeah, you know, that. I think that might be the ticket. I'm just looking at it and I like, you know, just ignore all of this other hangover here from the decal, but um, I like how much wider this is. That's that's kind of a cool effect. So let's let's delete this one. And what I was saying is that um, let's let's do it on this. One. We'll do it here. Duplicate and reverse. So if you are making moves with your pieces and you decide you don't like or you you've messed up, say we accidentally bump this and we start moving it around like this. We do this. Oh no, my design's messed up. No, it isn't. Um, you have two choices here. You've got cancel and you have okay. When you hit cancel, you hit yes, cancel editing, and it'll go back to where it was when it started out. So um, there is no control Z for anyone that's in, you know familiar with uh, any kind of like editing program or any program in general, most of them have, at least on the computer, have a control Z option where you can read, you can undo whatever changes you've made. Um, that's probably the closest thing that you have to a control Z in Gran Turismo. I wish they had a really hard undo button that you could press to undo and go back through the history of all of your modifications, but they don't have that, that, that type of uh, sophistication yet built into this livery editor. I, I really, that's that's the one over having um, rulers and um, measuring devices to measure where your design is and, and templates. That is the one thing I wish they would put into this, this I mean, it's probably easy enough to put in. The other stuff I could see having a problem putting it in you know, programming into the game because I'm sure there's tons of variables to decide what the center line for cars is and, you know, all that other stuff. But you, you could at least give us like an, uh, an unlimited, at least a 10 or 20 step, you know, controls the option where we can go back in history and try to fix something that we've rarely messed up. I don't know how many times I've been like, oh man, I wish this had a control Z option. I mean, we've got a copy and paste option, but you don't have a control Z option, which is kind of annoying. Oh crap, see, I just messed up that line because I thought I was moving the camera, but I was not. So I'm gonna hit the cancel, cancel that ending, and it goes back to where it was before. Okay, so, and and this is for, this is another point that I was trying to make with trying to figure out trying to keep your hierarchy um, straight is like right now I'm trying to figure out where that piece is that I used to mask um, all of this stuff so I can manipulate it to mask the rest of this but let's see if we can do this like this we just don't want it to, we don't want it to get too much into the, we don't want it to touch the hood at all, as a matter of fact. So maybe we can just make it smaller. We might have to find a new piece. Uh, I think that will work though. And then we'll just straight duplicate that. And we'll move it over here. 
I've never done this type of design before. I'm gonna repeat. So this might take a while. I've done the golf cart plenty of times before. That's why I was saying during Jared's stream is that um that it's it's such an easy design that uh that it's very easy to pull off during the course of one stream. This one is a little bit more challenging. Actually far a lot more challenging because there are a lot more things that we want to because we want to really make this kind of look like the part we want it to, not that we're trying, or we're basically smashing two designs together. So what was over here on this side? That one, we'll delete that. And then we'll duplicate this on reverse. That should give us, yeah, that gives us our fix there. So now we have to worry about that little, no it doesn't. See, and this is why I wish we had a control Z option. Where did that, where did that go? Where is that piece? Oh, it's that one. It's the one that's on the A pillar. So cancel, finishing the design. It, it does, if you put your cursor over it, it will, notice how that moves like that, that is, that is generally where, I mean, that's where the car, the part that you're trying to edit is, but it's like trying to figure what that crosshair is, if you're, especially if you're on the side, you know, there, there's like literally no difference, like which side is it? <laughs> is it, is it this side or that, that side? So that tells me that there is a part, there is a layer there that shouldn't be there that's duplicated. So we're going to we're going to delete that layer and we wanted to delete the layer that's around the headlight, which is, I think, I think it's that one. Yeah. It, it's gotta be that one. I think I say it's gotta be. And then I say, think after, I think after that, which is Ridiculous. Okay, so let's delete that one. All right. So I should only be getting layers over there. Okay. So this is the layer that I want to duplicate on the reverse. Oh, no. That gave us that layer. See what I mean? This is this is what I mean about kind of understanding where all of your all of your parts are. I think that's that one. So we should duplicate that one in reverse as well. Yeah, okay, that got it. Finish it again there. So now No, it didn't. Oh, you know what? It probably wants me to do Okay. I get what's going on here. This is going to be one of those ones we're going to have to flip horizontally and duplicate. Yep, there we go. Uh, no, it still didn't get it. Where is that? Oh, there's another one there. That's right. Okay. So we have to find the other piece. It's that one. We want to duplicate that on reverse. There we go. No. Well, we messed. We we moved it when we when we uh, switched cameras. Well, that's fine. We can just as long as the layer is there, I can mess with it and and fix it. It's not a huge. It's not a deal breaker. You are just not, you little piece of crap. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna accept all these errors. Okay, and then where's the other one? This one, 
Looks like it needs to be adjusted just a little bit to cover all of that maroon that's there. Shit. Shit. Let me bring it down. Can we make it just smaller? But still. It can be a juggling act, folks. But we're trying to look to get some preci precision out of this thing. I'm just doing real fine moves to try to get as much of that maroon in that. I don't think anyone's ever going to look at that, but, you know, if they do, I want it to make sure that it's, it's clean. Like I said, no one likes a sloppy liver livery. I sure as hell don't. Damn it. Let's see if we can get this shape to help us out here a bit. There's probably there are probably more shapes I can use to kind of pull this off. But oh man. I'm still left. Why did it do the other side so well? Okay, let's try something. Let's let's delete that layer. We're gonna try the whole copy and paste thing again, and then is that that layer? Yeah, finish any layer. We'll delete that one too. Okay, so we should have that full. All right, now we're gonna. Let's be clear on what we're, on what we are copying. Those two are the ones that we want to copy. Take that, duplicate and reverse. Did it do? That did most of it. And then one, two. Duplicate in reverse. This is like the Bob Ross of GT. I'm like the Bob Ross of GT. <laughs> okay. So, okay, that now, now we've got something going here. Now we have to get rid of those little triangles. That's easy enough. Well, once again, I'm really kind of trying to be conscientious of a, the amount of shapes that I'm using. So I might, what I might do is I might delete the shapes that I have masking it currently and try to find something that's larger because I really don't, I would like to do it in one sh one piece. What is obscuring that? Oh, maybe it's on the front. No, because then that would be treating that as a front part. Oh well, fuck it. I do curse. I just don't curse as much as I usually do. I know I don't curse too much on this stream, but on the alien stream, I've been cursing like a, like a, uh, like a pirate. There we go. That fixes that. Duplicate and reverse, and that one goes away. So now, that looks much better, right? That looks the part. Give me a second. I'm going to. I would, it would be nice if I can get it to not touch. But I don't, I don't particularly mind that it's touching those two vents or letting those two vents kind of intervene. Because, you know, this is... I'm trying to follow also this contour here. See this... See this line that is coming from kind of the grill. I'm kind of treating the grill and the light there. See where the light meets that pointy part of the light meets the grill on the front. I'm kind of trying to continue that line all the way to the back. As if this line, if that grill didn't wasn't there, this this the maroon part of that line would would originate kind of where 
it meets the grill there, which I mean, that kind of looks pretty symmetric. I mean, that looks, that looks the part. I also like that curve. Look at that curve. That curve is really nice. That's kind of why I wanted it to, to go all the way out there because I think that that curve is a really, really nice curve. Um, give me a second. I need to, uh, I need to refill my water. Um, I'll be back in a second. Okay, we're back. So, what we're gonna try to do next is, uh, let's try to work on that sunburst behind the camel, or the white burst, I guess we're gonna call it because it's not really a sunburst. But um, let's try to do that behind the camel because I don't wanna just paint the hood white. I mean, now that we have, let's see, let's see what it looks like painted white now that we have the decal kind of covering it. But I don't, I don't think I want it just white. I think I want to do that. That Yeah, that kind of looks boring. I mean, it could work. It could work, but I think it would be nicer with the sunburst. So let's just go back to what we were doing before. You know, the whole point is to try to make the car look like a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> and I'm not trying to glorify smoking or anything. You know, I've said it once, I say again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like a smoker that is proud of being a smoker. I'm, I'm the smoker that's trying to quit. I've known too many people that have died because of, uh, cancer and, and it's really kind of a terrible, terrible affliction. So this is the first time I've ever worked with these gradients before. I think the gradient that's going to do the best job for us is probably this one. And if we do it like that, that's much nicer than, than painting the hood white. Let's just make sure it's not touching. We want that tan to show around just a little bit to that or that maroon border, but I think that kind of looks nice. That's really, it's really, uh, it's really subtle, but you can tell, you can see, you see the, uh, the change there. And notice too, um, that I, because I put it underneath of the camel layers, this camel layer is now sitting on top of it rather than being um, below it. Um, if this were placed in the wrong spot, boom, our camel is gone. And you can see, I mean, at least this gives you an idea of what the filter is doing or what the layer is doing. It's, it's, uh, you know, I can pick the color, whatever color I pick, and it's just going to make it a gradient all the way through. So like pink, see, all right, but we want ours to be white. And then we want it to be below everything that is on the hood. So it does that. Now that, that definitely looks way, let's take a look at this and then look at our source picture. See it's now, now it's starting to look the part, right? We've got the same maroon. Maybe we can put 
the gold, that yellow, which is darker. It looks like it's more gold than it is yellow. So we'll put that that uh, part of the uh, color scheme into the red triangle, these maroon triangles that we have. Remember, we're trying we're trying to emulate uh, this martini stripe. That's here in uh, these Lancia cars that are in the back. And it looks like we have a thick stripe. There are three tones going on here. It's a dark blue, which is our base, our base shape, which would be our maroon shape. Um, a lighter blue and then the red. And those are stripes. That's, that's going to be really challenging, but we'll see. We'll see if we can pull something like that off. Uh, let's get back into PlayStation and uh, see what we can do to facilitate that. All right. So let's start with uh, let's start with a hood stripe first, and then we'll try to match it. We'll try to match it on the sides of the car there. Give me a second. I'm just trying to think of how this is going to work. All right, let's try this. What what I could do, honestly, I mean, it just might be easier to do it as stripes rather than doing layer on top of layer on top of layer. Uh, but the problem with doing it with stripes is it's going to take an awful lot of decals. Um, let's just play with it right now. Let's play with how we can how we can create those those stripes within this stripe. Like I said, I might even carry it up into the pillar there and just make all of that part of the car maroon. But we'll cross that bridge once we, we once we get to it. So let's try to do projection. We'll keep the projection methods like that. Let's see if we can get one of the curlier. This is straight enough, I think, that we might be able to skew it to do our bidding here. Um, we want it to do maybe like that. Let's skew. Whoops, wrong button. Skew is L1. Let's see if we can straighten it out as much as we can. And you're not really straightening, I'm just kind of flipping it horizontally. See how it flips like this? It's like it's doing a flip, All right? And this is this is how much you can really kind of manipulate these these shapes to do what you, what you wanted to do. Uh, I don't think this is straight enough. We're not going to be able to get that to follow along Cause because that triangle is such a straight line. We might have to use another triangle. Yeah, I think I think that might be easier. So maybe we'll just do maybe we'll duplicate this one. And we'll just stack a bunch of triangles on top of each other just to get them to do what we want to do. Mainly because they're already there and and they're lined up and all I really have to do is kind of repeat them. Uh what type of yellow do we want? Just start with that, and we'll just move like we did, like we've done before. We'll just move, move it, and give us it'll give us the thickness that we want. Maybe there. I don't know if that's the yellow that we want, though. Let me see. Let me grab a pack of smokes. Great. The newer the newer packs don't have they've changed the packaging of camels a bunch since for the past couple of years. So let's let's go. 
I think it's I think it's definitely more of like a richer gold. It's definitely like a richer gold than, than what we're using here. So let's let's come back over here. And try to get something that's a little a little more in it looks like it's kind of somewhere in between like gold and like maybe orange maybe it's kind of in this territory here somewhere on, on the brighter end of, of things obviously maybe up here I mean that looks more like it right there I think all right Oh, that looks like a mess, but I mean that kind of looks the part there. Let's uh, let's duplicate that, and then we're gonna change the color back to the maroon. And let's move it down, and it'll give us our first stripe. Maybe a little thicker. And then maybe maybe what we'll do is we'll move our yellow one because it's now running into that, that vent. Let's make it so that it's symmetrical and kind of misses the vent. And that will give us the dimension that we need for for that line. Ad is starting to look pretty cool. All right, let's see if we can do another one. The, the tough part is, is having to try to repeat the stripe or trying to continue the stripe onto the car itself, but I think we can probably manage that. What I'm worried about is, this is a lot easier to do on the hood because once these shapes pass the barrier, the boundary of the hood, they don't really, they don't impede on the rest of the car. It's gonna be harder to do it on the sides and to maintain this, uh, this shape that we've got going on here, um, this curve. We wanna to try to maintain that curve because you know I intentionally wanted to kind of accentuate that curve. So I don't wanna, I definitely don't wanna lose that. Um, one difference I think that we're gonna have is that Let's, let's switch over back to the Martini car real quick. Or the Martini cars. I think this line is supposed to widen out once we get to, it's supposed to widen out at the headlights and then get skinnier when we hit the, uh, once we get to this like section of where we hit the A pillar. Uh, give me a second, let me switch back to Yeah, it looks like it definitely wants to be wider where the headlight is and then and then narrow down to a point once we get to the A pillar and then where the mirror is. That that's gonna be tough. Trying to keep that even that like even because see how symmetrical it is to doing that? I mean, we could probably do it the way that we're doing it. I'm just gonna have to get a little bit of an angle. It looks like we're gonna have to start with that first orange line, so or the first yellow line. So let's go back to the flight station. So it's that line right there. Let me move. Where is the shape that's on top of it? Is it this one? No, it's this one. So what we can do is maybe we can 
rotate it so that it is wider. So we can do something like that. And like I said, once again, we can we can always, you know, us getting this even on this side is super important because that'll carry over to the other side once we dupl duplicate the layer. I mean, that looks pretty much the part right there. Let's uh, let's try doing it with. No, you know what? I'm good. I'm over confusing myself. Let's let's now do another maroon layer or another gold layer. I'm just I'm thinking, guys. I'm thinking of how this is going to work. I mean, it doesn't have to totally be like the martini car. I just want to ins be inspired. So maybe we can just, just to keep this easy, maybe we can just do it to two of these yellow stripes. I'd like to try that. Let me see if I can fit another th a third one in there. What, I, what I'm looking at too is that there, with the martini design, there's a large red stripe that usually happens in the middle. And I'm not sure if we have enough room to do that here. Uh, let's take a look at the car again real quick. Sorry, we keep on switching back and forth, but I mean, this is part of the process, is, especially if you're trying to pull from a resource, uh, trying to pull from a, a, a source photo, you know, inspiration. So let's, uh, let's switch back to that car and see what happens. Yeah, it looks like we've got two stripes of blue. Once we get to the headlight, so maybe maybe we can make maybe we can make our gold stripe just smaller and try to fit another one in there before we get to that one central stripe. So Look, how can we do that? We're gonna have to work with this triangle first. Because these lines, maybe these lines have to be a little bit finer, right? I think I'm giving it, I think I'm giving those lines just too much space to kind of be Existing. So maybe something more like that, I think, would work. All right. So let's uh, just gonna remember where we are. Which. One's that? That's the bottom one. Okay, so let's just for the shits and giggles right now. Let's just go ahead and duplicate this on reverse right now. This is kind of going beyond. Uh, this is kind of going uh, against my normal design ethic because I normally don't do this until I'm done with one side. But since we're working with a completely new design to me, um, ooh, it did not do what it was supposed to be doing. Wait, maybe it's because, yeah, maybe because, maybe it's because one layer is covering the other layer. So let's figure out where this, where we're having problems with layer hierarchy. Nope, it's not there. There it is. And then that means that this layer, I think, might be going on top of it. Nope. It's not that layer. We may have duplicated a layer that we don't need. To, and this is what I'm talking about when I talk about layer hierarchy, knowing where exactly in your design you are, because I don't know. Okay, so that this must be that bottom that layer on the side. Okay, that is. 
and then that means that this layer is this layer, right? Yeah. And then, then this layer is this layer. Yeah. And then that would mean that this layer, it should be that triangle. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, wait a minute. We're on the wrong side of the car, aren't we? No, we're not. We're on the hood still. Yeah, we're still on the hood. So how is that duplicating things on the side of the car? <sighs> That's the layer we want to duplicate. but it's not putting it where it's supposed to be. So that layer needs to go there. Okay, there we go. See how important knowing where in your design your layers are? What is that? That's, that's the main, oh, now that's the secondary triangle. So let's start with that one. We'll duplicate that one. We'll go ahead and change its color just so that we know what we're changing. This is that color, right? Yeah. This is this design is also going to be tough because we're using multiple we're using multiple <laughs> layers of very similar colors. Okay. All right. And then we'll duplicate that layer. And then we'll change its color to maroon. And we'll move it. Son of a bitch. We'll move it ever so slightly. We'll give it a little bit of an angle there so that we can continue our motif of lines that start large and and small giving us a martini type stripe that looks pretty, pretty close. I don't think we're gonna get any closer than that. It looks like it's a tiny bit wider than that other line, but I don't quite, I don't mind it that much. Let's see if we can get it to, oops, no, that's too much. Bear in mind, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm taking into account that I have to, I have to make this, these, these patterns continue on to that A pillar. So I'm always thinking about how I can achieve that once I get to that part. Um, maybe I don't want this line as wide because I'm trying to get that center. I want to get that center stripe in there and we all want it to kind of terminate there right right where the a pillar and kind of the hood meet just beyond that see how the a pillar comes down and then it starts becoming part of the hood we want we want it to kind of we kind of all want it to converge on this one point where the maroon and tan meet to one point if we can that's going to be it's going to be a chore <laughs> but but let's let's try to do it so let's try to duplicate this layer in reverse and then shit Maybe we didn't want to duplicate it on reverse. Let's let's try doing it this way. Let's duplicate. I think this. God, Lord Almighty. 
let's let's try doing that one I think oh shit wrong way delete layer good lord what have I gotten myself into alright see now now I have to finish this because I've made it a point to try to try to do this so we can't like be like oh no we're not gonna do this anymore plus this is YouTube so everyone likes to see completion at YouTube <laughs> okay I think I think we've got a good start here we definitely have uh, we have the feel for what we want to do here so I'm trying to figure out how we should go about this next part of the process because now we're going to go into that the one big stripe that sits in the middle that would be the red stripe in these martini designs and uh, we'll take a look at that again So now we want to tackle that red stripe, the red part of the stripe, which looks like in some instances is the same size as the blue stripe, but in most instances, it looks like it's, it's larger, like the, the two, well, one of the prototype cars, the one on the right hand side, uh, it looks like the stripe stays pretty uniform. I mean, it's larger than the other ones, but it stays pretty uniform. We are we are shooting once again for that Lancia that's in the middle, the rally car, um, that type of widening red stripe in the middle. Um, but see, it's bordered by two other stripes, two of the smaller stripes on either side. Um, it might be easier to tackle this going backwards so we don't mess up our our um our line from the headlight to the a pillar um and that way we can use the whole idea that uh that part of the design won't bleed over to uh to uh what we've done on the hood so it might be a little bit more forgiving forgiving to work backwards So let's try that. We're going to finish editing that layer and then we're going to move to the right side of the car. And, and hopefully if we can get these two lines to behave themselves, that'll automatically give us our, our real state for the line in the middle. That's what I'm hoping. And then that's going to have to be a decal between between uh I don't know if we're gonna be able to fit that in there now that I'm looking at it oh well fuck it let's let's try <laughs> we're gonna have to move back to the body go to add layer we're gonna work on the left side we're gonna choose a decal I think we were working with this triangle here or with the triangle this one No, 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 no. Let's try. Let's try working with one of these triangles. That's the original, the originating triangle there here. So it's already being masked. What, what we're going to have to worry about too is that we have, we have masking pieces over this piece. So it, we might have to add more masking. We'll see what happens. Let us duplicate this layer. And then we're going to make it yellow. Oh, what, what yellow was it? Was it this, this yellow or this yellow? I think it's that yellow. I wish I could, 
we since we've tried a couple yellows now I've got a couple yellows in my color history which that's another thing is I wish you could remove colors from your color history but you can't do that so our maroon stripe looks like it's about that big But see, what this is doing now is that it's, we're going to have to try to work with this so that, let me see if I can move, nope, let me try, I'm trying to move this triangle up just a little bit. We want it to get skinnier. We want this maroon line to be larger. We'll go through and we're gonna have to, going to have to redo our masking for this for these shapes here. And that's all good. I knew I was gonna probably have to redo that to some degree. I mean that looks close. I mean, I would like to, for it to be symmetrical, but I mean, I don't have any way of really kind of testing whether or not it's symmetrical or not, other than, other than by just looking at it by sight. There's no real way of kind of trying to get some kind of symmetry out of this whole thing. Okay, well, let's, let's just move on and see what happens. Let's duplicate this layer and let's assign it maroon and then let's move it around. And we give it its wideness. that mm, eh. I mean that's that's close I mean that's probably as close as I'm going to be able to get it I don't know how people do this this design I don't know if what would people do download from the livery discovery thing. I don't know if those are designs that people have made through this or whether or not they just, you know, made it in some other program outside of Gran Turismo and then just imported it in. I would imagine that people are generating this inside of Gran Turismo, but it, it's, it's really tough. Like I said, you kind of have to work with the, the restraints that are built into the system and, and that can be really frustrating as you're refining here. So we want to, we want to duplicate that layer again and then we want to change its color to yellow or yellow, which is that one. And then we want to move it again along its little way. We want to make sure that it's doing the whole converge thing there. How I'm going to make all these lines converge at this one point is beyond me. <laughs> like I said, folks, this is the first time I've ever tried doing something like this. So, um, but I have full confidence in myself that I could probably pull something not maybe exactly the same as the martini livery but pretty damn close you know I'm, I'm also trying to make it not look like a martini livery I am and I'm not Crap, I 
I think I had it there. Maybe it's just enough to have the gold and the yellow. Um, the more that I'm looking at it now, I kind of like the idea that it's just gold and yellow. So now the tricky part is trying to get that yellow to live on the hood. So we're going to have to skip back to the hood. And we're going to have to duplicate our last shape, which I think is this one. Please be the right one. Yes, you are. Okay. We're going to duplicate it. And then we're going to make it yellow. Or yellow, which is that one. And then we're going to move that line so that it matches up with the line on the hood. Or the line on the body. Which we should be able to do. This is where it gets tricky, folks. Oh my god. I can't I, just, I can't believe it. I just got that like off of one try. I mean, that's pretty sick looking. It's pretty cool looking. Let's see what it looks like when we Let me try to finish those two yellow lines and run over to the A pillar and then also try to uh, try to do our masking to mask off I would like to try to fit another line in there but I don't think it's going to be really tough to do that I just don't know how we're going to pull that off because it's, it's so there's so little real estate there. I mean, for not having ever done this type of design before, I think this is actually pretty darn good. <laughs> not to pat myself on the back, which I'd like to do a lot. But <laughs> at this point, I don't have anyone else to do it for me. So <laughs> let's, um, let's try to continue on. Let us find what was what was the last shape that we did? It was this shape, right? Where are you? Yeah, okay. It was that shape. So we want to duplicate that shape once again. Change its color to yellow. Our yellow. And then we want to move the line to match that line that's on the hood. Can we do it? That is pretty close. That looks pretty darn close. And then duplicate again. Change it to the maroon. And move them little doggies on their way. Mind you, I'm also kind of doing the trans, the, the rotate. You see that slight rotation there because you have to rotate it in order to make to make that shape. And that looks pretty freaking close right there. So let's finish adding that layer. Duplicate that layer again. Give it that or that yellow. Luckily, I um, I'm a real big stickler for patterns. Oh shit, I'm doing the wrong thing. Like I really scored. I really score high on um those quote unquote IQ tests, which I don't I think they're bullshit, but but I score high with pattern recognition. So this is one of those things where if you're really good at patterns, uh this is pretty much up your alley. And kind of abstract thinking. But more more so patterns. 
this is pattern. I just see patterns and everything. It's probably more of a sickness than it is something that everyone should be proud of. But I, d I do like abstract thinking and patterns a lot. Wow, that looks that looks pretty cool. I mean, what would be even cooler is if I could run that stripe up the middle, but I don't think I can at this point. I think I'm just gonna deal with, what color is that? Where is that shape? Maybe I can just change the color of that shape. But I want it to be bordered by that maroon color, and I don't think I have enough real estate to do that. So we might just live with it like that. So let's get back up to this A pillar and try to figure out a way to mask all of this, all of these mess ups here. Let's see if we can move this guy around enough that we can mask all that shit off. Sorry, language. I mean, I don't have this channel. Like all my videos are not safe for kids, but I don't want to be. I don't have to curse every five seconds. That is just how I roll sometimes. <laughs> Especially when I work in this thing, I am continually cursing. Because it can, it can be really frustrating sometimes. <laughs> like, why are you doing this to me, Gran Turismo? <sighs> and why is it doing this to me right now? Well, I don't, I, I don't think I can get it in just one shape. I'm going to have to do it with two shapes. So we'll just duplicate this again. I just move it over. Yep, there we go. So let's find the those two fixing parts on the other side. Because we're going to definitely need to... We're going to definitely need to duplicate that uh, looks like it's that one so we'll just do delete that layer and then we'll duplicate this layer in reverse okay one two duplicate this layer in reverse and that should give us our fixer part for once we start laying down the stripes on this other side uh, let's address that now so we can f address the masking layers for all that other stuff. So now we've got to figure out <coughs> where in the design all of these other stripes live. <laughs> Crap. We've really worked ourselves into a pickle here. Because I don't know. That's that triangle. This has to be the next triangle. Which one is that? That is that triangle. So we know we only need that one. Duplicate and reverse. Oh, okay. Finishing adding layer. Did did we do it? Delete layer. Nope. See what I mean? the wrong triangle where are you that's that triangle okay at least we can duplicate that on reverse and it's not now not showing up why not oh my god it looks like that maroon piece is over it so so let's, let's go through our hierarchy and try to figure out where that maroon triangle is. You know what I might do? I'm just going to... Okay, so that's the base triangle for that part of the body. Luckily, it counts the hood separately. So I can at least try to... That was that last little chunk of stripe, right? Yeah. So we can at least duplicate that in reverse, knowing that that's going to show up there. All right. 
So let's move to the side again and try to try to kind of figure out where exactly in our design we are. <laughs> Holy shit. So that is the base triangle. So I would make that triangle the one on the other side. Nope. Wrong duplicate. Delete there. Let's do this one. Duplicate in reverse. It still doesn't give us... Oh, wait a minute. You know why? I think it's because... All right. That makes sense. So we need to... We need to move this this triangle here. The reason why it's not showing up is because this triangle's above it right now. So we need to move that triangle underneath that guy. There you go. That's that's the ticket. Okay, so technically the next triangle I'm looking for is a maroon triangle, which I think is this one. Once again, this is this is the hierarchy. You need to really pay attention to where you are in your design. I think it's that triangle. Flash again. That looks like the one that we're looking for. Yep, it's meeting up. And then these triangles are the smaller triangles that we put up here to complete the design. And this is why I kind of I'm telling you guys to try to try to arrange your layers so that sections like these are all together so you're not like okay because I've had it before where you know my earlier designs you know it was kind of a nightmare trying to figure out where exactly certain assets were sitting in the design just because of the way that because of the organizational system that this this facet of this program allows you, it doesn't give you much in, in the sense of like being able to organize things. Like I can't organize this as hood, you know, hood decal. You know, I couldn't have to go with what they're giving me. That is pretty darn look good looking. Let me, um, let me do the mask. Let me finish masking these parts off here. We're already at 30 to th 30 of 300 decals for the body. Um, not being not really concerned with it right now because I think we could probably pull this whole design off without going over our 300 um, decal limit. But I definitely, if I need to start pulling decals off of this car, it's going to be this, these masking decals. So I want to make sure that like initially, initially I, I don't, I don't mind using a whole, especially when I'm doing just the right side. I try to use as many decals as possible just to try to get the shape of where I'm going. And then I'll pare down from there uh, with something like this. We're going to probably be doing a lot of layering like what we've been doing here on the front. Uh, so I kind of have to anticipate that we're going to probably need to use a lot of decals. I mean, we're already, we've already, we took, it took us 30 decals to get to where we are now. So at least on the body. So the masking decals, you, they're, they're important, but you want to try to minimize how many like tiny, tiny decals you use in order to mask stuff. If you can do it with one large decal, then do it that way. Cause it's a lot easier to find and a lot easier to work with. Okay, I wanna add layer to the front. And I think with Jared's car, we use a straight shape to do that here. Once again, we're working with the idea that we might even be able to stretch this all the way across and maybe do this all in one fell swoop. It doesn't look like we're gonna be able to do that, so we'll just do this. Once again, I'm trying to minimize the amount of de decals that I'm using to mask mistakes up 
or overlap with. So add another layer to the front. We will choose this decal and I know, I know it's big. Um, and the reason why, the other reason why I use these huge decals to cover up stuff is because um, when, when it, once it comes down to it, if I can cover more decals with this shape and just augment it a little bit, just to, you know, that help me do my, the, what I needed to do, then it's just far easier to do it that way than it is using a whole bunch of tiny decals to cover shit up. And then plus the duplicate and reverse, you know, it just makes it so much easier just to duplicate and reverse and not have to repeat. I mean, you could do that with uh, a bunch of tiny decals, but it's just a lot easier when it's one big decal <laughs> covering things up. So let's take a preview of what we got so far. That That's looking pretty good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. It, it's not quite the martini design, but I didn't want it to look exactly like the Martina design. I wanted it to have its own identity. Um, and I think I'm pulling it off pretty decently right there. Mm, don't know if I want to continue that maroon motif, the maroon mo motif, because it's gonna be hard to get. See how these lines distort here? It would have been nice if those ended straighter so I could run those two gold lines parallel all the way up over this part of the car and maybe to the back. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen with the way that we have it going right now. Uh, that's going to be a tough sell. Uh, that's going to be a very tough sell. So... I think I think I'm happy with this. I'm sorry, I'm just thinking right now. I think I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, it looks pretty tough. It's definitely different than anything else I've done before. And I'm trying to challenge myself as a designer for liveries. I don't want to continually make the same design over and over again. And I want to, you know, definitely get some experience doing something different. But for beginners, it's a pretty good start. I mean, I could f try to wrestle I can try to wrestle those two lines to go over. But now that I think about it, if you were to put your driver's name, and that's typically where a driver's name would go. I mean, it might not be this place that they would put it for like an endurance race, because generally during endurance races, they'd put in all the driver's names on the back window. Right there, right where, uh, right where the door ends, by the door frame there in the, in the window frame. That's typically kind of where driver's names would go for a Le Mans car or like an endurance or IMSA series car that has multiple drivers. But for cars that will have like just a single driver, you would put your name, you know, the same place where, where Grand Turismo puts the names right there. And if those orange, if that orange, if that maroon and if those maroon and yellow lines were to go up there, that would really obscure that. So I'm thinking that realistically in the sense of this, this design, um, that it just wouldn't be wise to have those two lines go up and around. I also don't think it would look that good. And it also is going to be a pain in the ass to try to get it to run parallel uh, to the lines in the car because we realistically would want to run them parallel 
from that A pillar area to or the front door area. I keep on calling it the A pillar, but it really isn't the A pillar. The A pillar is over here. Um, but I mean, you know, realistically, I would want to run those lines kind of in that area between uh, the door frame and the uh, the gasket up here. The rubber door seal. But I think this is a good starting point. I mean, this is pretty cool looking. So let's move on. Let's start. Let's do our striping for the side. Once we get the striping for the side done, we're pretty much done with this car. Uh, we'll do obviously all of the other branding stuff. Like I said, I want to do the whole camel thing on the top on the roof here. We might even give it a sports stripe up there and it just won't continue onto the hood. Um, that would be a nice way of to, con to continue this whole stripe motif. Uh, with the rest of the car. It doesn't look like it's going to allow me anything in this little black area back. I don't know what that area is. Honestly, that's not the fuel filling area. Maybe that's another Maybe that's another air duct for the car. Is it? What is that? Oh, where's the camera? I guess I can't shift the camera left and right, can I? What is that? Yeah, it looks like it's another Maybe that's maybe that's airflow management for this. But where would it go? It's such a weird spot for airflow management. Maybe it helps to cut down drat down or uh, or helps initiate more downforce on the rear wheels. I don't know. I don't know what that gap is there <laughs> for. What is that? <laughs> Or maybe it's, maybe that maybe it siphons. No, that looks like a backup. Cam that looks like the rear view, the rear view camera for the rear for the rear view mirror. Uh, I don't know what that little area is for. <laughs> if anyone can answer that, put it in the uh, put it in the comments below. So now let's um now that we've kind of kind of have that part of the car pretty much finished. Let's start taking a look at the side. Now, like I said, we're going to try to mimic what's going on in this Porsche car. And it looks like we've got... We have uh, a contrasting color on the bottom, which is the red and two light blue stripes on top of a dark blue stripe that continues on to the front part of the car. And that whole motif, the whole, whole motif gets played through the front part of the car and, and just continues on to the rear. Uh, we can do that. That's, that's pretty simple, I think. And we'll try to tackle that the same way we've ta we were we've tackled the stripes on the hood. So let's start with let's start with trying to decide where these stripes are going to start. We're going to now have to probably address this, the color of this front splitter and the side arrow which I think is probably going to be better as maroon. Let's see. I hope this, I hope these, these livery streams are helping someone. I mean, I wish I had someone that would told me how this whole thing worked when I started working with it. Uh, it took a long time to try to figure out like a really, easy way to work with this thing is you know it isn't they don't give you any instructions they don't even tell you basically that it's there um I, I think just because of the way the Gran Turismo sport menu is um another thing about the little thing 
that you should know about me is that I'm a big uh, proponent proponent for um, a user interface that makes sense. And I don't think the user interface, it, as clean as the user interface looks for Gran Turismo Sport, it's not a very good user interface. Like it really doesn't highlight things that um, are featured inside the game, like the social part of it. It does a really terrible way of like, you know, representing all the other parts that aren't racing. Even for it to, for the most part, I think when I was trying to figure out how to start racing in Gran Turismo, I was just like, where do I go? This is, this thing is like a nightmare. <laughs> uh, and that was one of the first off-putting things about Gran Turismo when I first bought it was, uh, was how bad the menu system is. <laughs> it's just terrible. <laughs> let's see. Let's try to find... This shape might work. Can we... How, how can we skew this thing? We hit L1 and we're going to try to skew it so that we can get like a sweet... sweeping line. This... This could work if we do it. If we skew it a little more, Let's skew it like that. And then maybe it can meet. I want it realistically to start swooping like here. Maybe if we can get it to swoop right here and kind of just graze this wheel well. So that like it creates this um, this kind of shape between, I don't know, I'm trying to explain something that I, I can't even explain myself to myself in the my brain right now. Maybe, maybe if we start the swoop here, and that way it could touch, it'll touch Okay, I think I, I think I have my landmark. What I'm going to try to do is get this line to continue up to here. Maybe something like that. Something like that, maybe. It's, it's gonna be a lot of real estate to fill up, or maybe maybe get to touch this part, touch the parts. Where do we want that line to end? I mean, I think if we can, if we can get it to kind of ride this line, that'd be kind of cool. Maybe if we do something like this, where. But then let's we're gonna have to skew this more. I don't, I don't think I can skew it any more than I've already skewed it. It's now starting to really distort. And I'm starting to lose the curve out of it. I mean something like that. Where where is it? Where is it ending now? If I were to continue with this line like that. That's close. That's real close. So maybe, maybe there. Uh, let's move this. Like this. I mean, that kind of looks like it. Is gonna make sense. It would be we would make that color this maroon, and then we'd make this other color the maroon as well. All right, let's uh, mm, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if that's gonna be right. 
because we realistically want to do we want to do like four yellow lines and try to kind of match the four yellow lines we have on our hood so maybe we're going to have to take maybe we're going to have to take this layer and move the line further this way um Kind of like that's where the swoop would start. And maybe like I want it to be pretty much parallel to the ground. Once it gets around this, that will give us a definitely enough real estate to get our yellow lines in there. So let's see if we can't continue. Where is this line going to go once it finishes there? I don't know if I like where it's going at this point. Because I really, really li realistically would like it not to like, I don't want it to really go too far up the car. I mean, it would be nice if I could get it to match up. I might have to do a variety of different shapes which is going to make making the stripes really hard because then I'm going to have to figure out shapes that's going to, that are going to follow along the contour of this uh, this compound shape that I've made with these two skewed out triangles. Oh man, this is this is a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. Uh, let's let's start over again. Let's see if we can find something. This might be a good job for the noodles. Let's let's bring out the noodles here. Notice how I haven't really messed with any of the projection methods at this point because like I said I'm trying to get I'm trying to get these these shapes to kind of work in my favor since they are wrapping around the car. So this one, we're gonna probably have to make bigger. And then we're gonna have to skew it a little bit. I skew it um, like this, so that it lays out a lot flatter. Oh, it's not gonna do what I want it to do. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of doing what I want it to do, but not quite. Not quite. I, you know what? I could try to do this and duplicate it and then pick it and do and flip it around so that it goes like this. Yeah, that's kind of more of the speed that I wanted to do, and then I'll just fill that in and then have it end. Where am I going to have this end? This is why I'm saying, I'm, this is why I like dealing with straight lines because this is it's a lot harder dealing with the curves. <laughs> because then I have to kind of figure out how I'm going to get this to, how I'm going to do duplicate layers of this. Um, let's, let's see if I can just continue with this curve. Um, definitely and when you get to points like this you just want to work with one side do not do not try to do this um, on multiple sides because because this is you're just gonna confuse yourself we're, we're gonna end up with a lot of layers um, so when you get to this type of operation you definitely want to you know kind of make sure that you're you're working as simply as you can. Do not overcomplicate your workflow. We might have to re unskew this. 
I mean, something like that would also even work. Right now I'm just scaling. But then where does that put us back here? I mean, something like that would kind of be cool. I mean, obviously the area between that white and let's just make it easier for you guys to, to kind of imagine. So everything that's in between <coughs> this maroon line and that other, the arrow down there, you know, would obviously be maroon and yellow. Though I don't like how this front part is not, like I said, by the time I get down to this number plate, I want, I want that line to be straight. So, I mean, we're going to have to mess with the angle there. Maybe we're going to have to skew it a little bit more to get it to do what I want it to do. Let's see what it does. If I keep on uh, vertical scales, we want to continue working with the tilt scale. Maybe we can do the vertical scale. Maybe lessen the vertical scale. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we want to definitely lessen it. See, that's that's going to probably be more of the ticket there. I know that doesn't make much sense. But hopefully it will here in a second. Because once I get to this number plate, I want this line to be straight. I want it to be kind of like at least on the trajectory of being parallel to the ground. But I think we're going to run into the same problem if we just keep on. Oh, Christ. Let's do, let's do that. No. Well, maybe we can just mask it to look like it's going straight. I mean, that isn't bad. Just trying to get the yellow lines to sit inside of it is going to be tough. All right. Well, let's try to, let's just fill out this whole area. Uh, we want to make sure that we're probably, you, you definitely want to put these layers below, all these fill layers below that border layer because we don't want it to uh, bleed over. And at least if we have that border layer above the fill layers, then uh, we'll have a guideline on whether or not um, when we once we start distorting these shapes to fill the area we need to fill, uh, they won't. We'll have like a hard area where we can't pass. See how see how this is now, you know, below that layer, right? So we can make this as big as we want. And once we start seeing white underneath is we know we got to at least shift it down. And uh, we're going to try to get as much coverage as we can with this. Because like I said, we want to try to minimize how many layers we're using. Because we do have, a, 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 we do have layer limitations. Uh, that looks like it's close. It doesn't make the job of trying to figure out how we're going to do these lines any um, easier. But it, it will at least give us... And before you do it, you definitely want to make sure it's a different color so you can tell whether or not it is... It is passing over. You want to make sure that you're not... 
you're not passing that boundary there. I mean, like I said, you can mask stuff like that right there, but I'm trying not to. Because I, I, I really don't know how many, how many layers I'm going to need to pull this off. So you might as well try to be as economical now as you can. Ooh, I don't like uh, I don't like I don't like how not smooth that is. Is that that layer? That line isn't quite smooth, so maybe we maybe we just mess with it just a little bit just to get, and then we can move this guy, give it a little bit of rotation. I don't like how that's lining up. Let's try to move this layer down here because this is probably straight line territory here, which our little triangle can help cover up. And then let's try duplicating that up here because it's got this rounded area, this rounded edge. We can use that to our advantage here. And try to push it up into that area there. Try to get it to not poke out from the rest of the design. Okay. I'll buy that for a dollar. We'll continue making layers underneath. As big as possible. Like I said, because we want to, you want to cover a good amount of territory here with these things. So we know we don't want to impede on that curve. We could probably make this smaller to fit our purposes. It'll be me easier to manipulate. Sorry, I'm just thinking. I'm just looking at this and, and trying to figure out if I'm doing what I want to do. I just don't like... I still don't like how it's not... It's, it's coming up there. I don't like where that meets this one. Can we move this one up maybe? Is it this one? Yep. Okay. Maybe we give it more of a curve there. That looks a little better. And and it's a little curvier. Let me see if I can put a noodle. <sighs> Maybe we can put a mask noodle to give us the line that we want over top of that maroon noodle. Our arc. Because it's an arc. It's more of an arc than it is a noodle. But a noodle is an arc, right? And then maybe, maybe it'll do something like that. Let's uh, change its color to that tan. That's much better. That does look a little better. It, it could probably get straightened out a little bit. We'll mess with it. But see how what I'm saying? I kind of want it to run uh, parallel to the ground once it gets to this point in the design. Uh, I 
can try to finagle it just a little bit more. See what it's covering. Uh, we could probably skew this shape to do a little bit more of, there we go. See how it's, it's kind of smoothing that line out. That, that I think is, that I think is close to what I want to do. From that point on, I could probably take a straight piece because I want it to kind of straighten out and be straight. I mean, it doesn't, it's, it does all its curves on the side. I don't want it to do any curves once it gets to this point. So let's, let's assign it a straight shape. And we want it to run parallel, so uh, I will make it run parallel. But we don't want to mess up that part of the curve, so we want to match it up as much as we can to where this started leveling it out. So just like right there, right? I th think that's level. <sighs> Let's bam another piece in, cancel editing. I did too many rotations, so let's do that. Uh, and that should be parallel because I have to guess whether or not things are parallel. Parallel? I do so much guessing doing this kind of work. One thing this is doing that I don't like is it's now. So we're gonna have to okay, I see what's going on. See it's 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 laying itself on to that I was hoping that I could avoid it to laying on the area where the air vents are for the uh for the brakes, but it, it looks like that's not gonna happen. So we'll just duplicate that layer and shift it down just a little bit, boom, it's done. So now that whole area back there behind this uh piece of arrow is is now also very uniform and that will come into play once we get to the front of the car because what we'll do we might as well just do that now because because we're here nope well we need that piece anyway so we'll just do that um we might be able to not we're not gonna be able to have coverage so one, two. We want to duplicate that layer. We want to shift it forward so that we can get some sort of uniformity to that whole part so that we have now that. Which, ah, that's close enough for government work. Okay. So, now, as YouTube, t YouTube tells me that I don't have enough packets to stream, but I've got 6,000 going out, don't pay attention to that comment, I'm just talking to myself. Now we have to address this whole rear end area. Let's try to find a piece that will fit this area. Do I like the shape that that's making? I, I don't know if I do. Let's, uh, let's take one of these pies. We'll duplicate that. And we'll move it along its way. Move them doggies down the trail. And then we'll duplicate it again. And we'll move it down further. We'll 
address the rest of this once we get to the back of the car and where this line, what the, how this line behaves back here. My thoughts are is that this will continue to the rear and we can do a straight four line motif on the back for, um, for the sports striping. But it is coming along. Let's uh, let's start working on the sports stripes because that's the other part of this design I'm really kind of worried about, especially once we get to here, um, how the sports stripes are going to behave and how we're going to create parallel sports stripes all the way through this design. I might decide, I need to decide that now, whether or not I want it to cut away like it is. What I'm gonna do now is I think I'm gonna go ahead and Sorry, I'm just thinking to myself, people. How do I want this to execute itself? Yeah, I like the curve. I'm just not sure if this little wave thing back here is how I want it to do. I mean, it's cool. It's just going to make it really complicated once we get to this point because I need to find something that's going to be able to run parallel to what I've already done here. I'm going to probably do that with those noodle shapes. These noodle shapes are probably going to be the easiest way to do that, to do the striping. So um, let's try to do at least one of them. What time are we at? 2.17. So we've got two hours. Let's uh, let's try to do this. I hope, like I said, I hope everyone is like kind of enjoying this. I watch a lot of YouTube like um, modeling videos, and this is kind of it's kind of the it's kind of the direction that I wanted to take the channel originally. Uh, it just happened that it, I. I can, this is way easier and cheaper to do than, than building models. This is going to be the tough part is trying to get this, trying to get these to behave the way I want them to behave. And I think the only way I'm going to do that is through this scale function. See, these lines should be way thicker, like, like that. And then they have to run semi-parallel to this. But see, I don't want to see how it's poking out underneath there. I know I'm trying to avoid that at all costs. Like I want, like I said, by the point we get by the time we get to there in the design, I want to be straightened out. It might be because of the way this car is shaped. Then we might be only able to work two sports stripes into this. Let's see if we can skew this a little bit more just to get it to run a little bit more straight. I don't think we are, we're going to be able to do that. I don't think it's going to skew it enough. All right, that's going to be tough. That's going to be really, really hard. How am I going to do that? Can I skew these even more? How much more can I skew these things? Well, that's pretty. That's pretty distorted as it is. 
I mean, just trying to get it to work here. I mean, what I could get it to do is just to do something really original and just make it mine, my own here. This is another another design element that I've noticed in race cars is like radiating lines from a central point. If I could get it to do that, then that would be kind of cool. Or not everything runs parallel like this is. But I, I, I kind of want it to run parallel because I just want to make a symmetrical design. I also, you know, eventually, eventually would like to do a martini car. I just don't think that line is... is Let me, we'll keep that there. Let's work on this line, because I don't think this is line, this line still isn't doing exactly what I wanted to do, so we'll delete that guy. It's just so jagged. What's that line, that's that line back there. We want this line right here. Maybe if I can get it to just take a little bit more real estate here. And that way I won't need that that one part, that one straight part. Oh man. It's starting to become a huge mess. But that is the part of doing this. Especially if it's like a slow Sunday. It's kind of a nice Sunday activity because there's not really anything going on. You're about to finish, you're about to start the week, so you don't want to do anything really strenuous. It's kind of like a puzzle game. I just don't like how when these two meet up, you can really see where they meet. I'm just trying to finesse that Trying to finesse that line so that it doesn't look so abrupt when it does meet up with this guy. I mean, that's probably as close as I'm gonna get. And it's gonna make it really hard when I try to, if I wanna try to keep a consistent spacing between the sports stripes, like the Martini design has, it's gonna make it really tough trying to get that to f match up. It's still, it's still jagged. I still don't like how it's behaving. Let's see if we can. I mean, what does it look like without it? Okay, so it looks terrible without it. Can I just run it like this? It doesn't look like it's going to work. I mean, at that point right there, it's the closest I think I can get to a smooth line going from front to back. I just don't like what it looks like when I come up here. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. I mean, I'm the only person that's going to probably be tell be able to tell that it's it's not doing well me and everyone else that's a perfectionist doing this this type of shit and Gran Turismo it's not really that you know me I'm worried about it. it's people that download my stuff I don't want like I said no one likes a sloppy livery editor or livery creator done such a good job of keeping 
a fan base in my liveries. I'm going to keep that fan base. I also don't, I don't know if I like how it cuts out back there. I mean, we really kind of want it to be like that. Be realistic. I'm just looking at the front end. Shit. The thing is, is that this is going to also coincide with what we have going on with the front because we already have the front end maroon parts established. And it's kind of where I want those elements to be. But then... I mean, we could move those up a little. I just like how where it is back here behind the arrows. See how it makes this little bend here. I kind of don't want to go beyond that because I kind of like where that is in the grand scheme of things. It's just once we get it down to here, we know, you know, down here to the where the exhaust outlet is, where the exhaust pipe ends. We know that is being treated as a separate part of the car. I wonder if I can put, I wonder if it'll allow me to put decals down there. Yeah, it looks like it can. So we might be able to pull off. Okay, all right, that makes me feel better. So, let's try to get this stripe looking uniform because I think we we're gonna be able to do this we just need to get we really need to work on this this curve here and make it make it look a little bit more natural and I think that might be it give me a second maybe if I can match the two ends up together That looks pretty, the, pretty much looks the part there. All right, so then maybe we can adjust this guy to go back down to where it was. No, nope, maybe not. It's making it hard because I've got that triangle, so we're gonna have to move that triangle. Where are you? You are this one, I think. Nope. You're not a triangle. You. What are you? What, what the job are you doing? You're not doing any kind of job at all. So let's get rid of you. Let's find the triangle that is doing the job. There it is. There we go. Okay. Lots of trial and error with this. But don't let Gran Turismo tell you what to do because you can always you can always force it to do your will. You just need to be patient and you need to be vigilant. <laughs> just like with anything that you're trying to get to bend to your will. So we're gonna probably need to get a filler part just to even out. The little bit of unevenness we have there. But we want it realistically to kind of like be, we don't want it to be too, we don't want it to get too straight. Okay, so can I move this, this triangle up now? And get it to do that, maybe. Noticing back in the rear, we've got all kinds of craziness going on, but we'll address that later. Let's just duplicate this. Since that shape's already there, and all we know, we know that we, all we have to do is kind of move it down to get coverage. It's just enough to cover that. And then we will 
let's duplicate this again and we will make it 10 and try to move it so that it whoops so that it evens out that part so it meets that that's damn close that's real damn close can I get it to be smaller maybe and then move it down that that's pretty darn close That's pretty darn close. So now we gotta address this shit that's going on back here. Um, I don't mind it doing that. I just have to make it fit the motif of this wave now that's going on back here. Let's see what part, what labels, what decals do we have working back here? We've got this big guy and we have that big guy. Let's see if we can move this one around to do our bidding. And that kind of looks better. I don't like how it cuts right there. So let's see if we can get that to not do that. I kind of like that. <sighs> All right, so I mean, it, that looks pretty even. And it looks like a surface I can work with. I'm real happy with how this front end area is turning out. I still am on the fence about this big swoop in the back here. But I, if once I start getting all of these elements in, let's see. Let's see if it changes my mind about how I feel about it. So let's make this son of a bitch real. Let's make it pretty big. Uh, and then we'll try skewing it again. This is going to be the hardest part of this design is doing our, our doing these stripes is going to be really tough. I mean, this is probably the reason why I don't try to do these designs too much because it's a lot of times I don't have time to do it. I'm just like, I don't want to think about even doing that. Oh, that's too straight and it's too narrow. Can we see? We, can we get it to not be so straight and narrow? But I don't want it to do that, though. The problem is, is it's widening out too much at the bottom there. Maybe if we can get it to tilt vertically and go flip just a tiny bit. It's kind of the thickness I'm trying to go for here. This is gonna be tough. This is gonna be a tough design. <sighs> or this is a tough design. Uh, let's try with a curvier part. Let's see if something with a little bit more curve will give us what we want. Let's flatten it. Nope, not flattening it the way that I want it to. This is so annoying. Nope. Uh, kind 
this. Nope. Uh, let's see if we do that. No, because we kind of want it to do that. This is this is a pain in the ass. Um, I mean that is pretty close, but we're gonna have to do a thousand of those little lines to. It's it's gonna take a lot of lines if we're gonna have to go that thin. <laughs> it's like a pinstripe. I see that I'm see this little error. Don't think that I don't see that little maroon part. That's or the little tan part that's sticking out because I do. I'm just hoping that we can we can remedy that with uh, one of the gold stripes, but I don't think it, it's going. It looks like it's going to be outside of where our gold stripe is. So let's try to move this. Let's try to move this triangle up and try to get that little area covered without impeding too much on our our tiny thin line. Let's see what that did. Uh, okay. That looks like it's right on the narrow edge of being of poking through. But that That's right on the edge. We'll take it. So back to working on you. Maybe we'll start our lines here. It seems like a good spot to like it's a combination of scale it looks like oh, scale and tilt to try to get us kind of parallel to this line oh, that's too much I just don't want it to go too far off a of parallel. <laughs> I mean, that looks kind of close. Let's uh, let's turn it yellow before we start. No, 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 no. Cancel. Delete. We might have to execute these lines. We might have to execute a bunch of these lines in order to get the thickness that we want. So let's duplicate the layer. And let's take that guy and move it down. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a nightmare. Okay, that layer. Oh, holy shit. This is going to take a lot of decals. If we've got to make these lines this thin, oh, good lord. We are going to get real close to our, our, our decal limit. Sorry, this is going to be a lot of duplicating. So we're trying to get... Oh, crap. So I need to look at the layer above it. Try to fill that gap. It doesn't want to fill. This is real, real accurate work at this point. Like I'm doing... Very, very, very tiny moves with my control stick right now. Um, man, if we want to hit that thickness that we got here, we, we've got a lot. So this is already telling me that this might not be the best way to, to go about this. Because it's taking a ton of layers in order to get one, one line. If we have to do that all the way across, you know, 
my real limit on this side is is 150 or not even that is uh 200 264 we have 264 decals left on the body we haven't even done the rear yet um we haven't even put sponsorship stickers on it yet so we're already starting to look pretty thin on our um on our deco count so we need to find a layer that's going to be is going to fill or do the job without having to s expend too much out of our layer account there. Um, I'm trying to think of what layers, what shapes I can use to do that. I mean, I could maybe be able to use one of these. I wish just, I wish they had curved ones. Like, there's no real curved. If I had two curved lines that ran parallel to each other, like like these, this would be far easier. But they don't have those. They just have these straight lines. I mean, like, technically one of these would probably work. To a certain, to a certain degree. I mean, we, we could try making it, no, that's way too many lines. Let's try, let's try doing it with one of those. But I, I don't think it's gonna work. Let's see what they have on their patterns. What do you have on their patterns? Ooh, that might work. This might work as well, too. These might actually work really well. Or, um, oh, that's perfect. If we can get that in a curve. Shit, they don't have it in a curve. Um, See, I would have to mimic that. Mm. I get these to curve. Um, skew left and right, horizontal. Um, I can get it to. I can get it to do that, but I can't get it to curve. Okay. So. Looks like we're just we're just gonna have to deal with it. We're gonna have to figure out a way to do this. Let's try one of these straighter ones again and see if we can't get it to go real straight to follow that. Uh, but see, like I said, we're gonna run into this situation where that it's gonna be too small. See if we can make it bigger. And then scale it this way. I mean, we might just have to deal with not doing quite the martini look. Maybe have these stripes radiating out, 
but then again, I still would want them to follow along the contour of that curve there. I mean, we could do something like this where for shits and giggles. This is where I'm going to start putting in some artistic artistic liberties, folks. Hmm. Okay, let me try skewing it a bit more. Didn't mean to do that. <coughs> Maybe if we do something like that. But then, where does it land there? Because remember, this is going to also translate over to the front end of the car. I mean, I don't, I don't mind that too much. It's doing something like that. I, I don't mind that actually too much at all. <sighs> because then that would give us our straight lines for the front of the car. Let's just play with it. Let's duplicate it. Remember, it doesn't have to look exactly like the, our source car. We're just pulling inspiration off our source car. Can we not get it to do the bendy thing? See, now it's starting to warp around that part because I have it laying because of the projection me projection method I'm using right now, it's gonna do that. I don't know how much projecting it like a um, Changing the projection method to see what if we change the projection method as <sighs> finish it in layer. Let's delete. Where is that layer? It's that one. And then we'll delete this one. Let's change this projection method to camera. We'll choose the decal, which is the same one as this one. And maybe we should be doing these as um, projectors. Let's just see how it behaves when we start um, warping it a little bit. How are you going to behave once you hit that part of the car? Almost like it is a white stripe. It's going to do kind of the same thing. like that white. Maybe, maybe we'll just do that white stripe. Hmm. And 
and uh, it'll continue there. Behind that little area back there. We'll have to address that once we, we get to it. It looks a little better. Definitely looks better from this view. Can we, can we get it any bigger? And can we get it to, to kind of curve a little bit more? Not too worried about what it's doing there in the front of the car because I can always cover that. And it's kind of being partly obscured by that uh, by that piece of aerodynamics right there. So that actually does not look too bad. We're now kind of getting into Washington Redskins color <laughs> color scheme. Uh, but I don't mind it too much. If I can fit another third stripe underneath of that one I think will be tits uh, let's try to do that that doesn't look bad though I mean it's it's a really kind of interesting and that was this is what I was talking about having lines radiate radiate out from a central point uh, this is what we're doing here and it does not look terrible. It looks actually like the part. It looks pretty cool. Um, I would like to fill this upper part back here, but maybe this that's just the characteristic of the design, you know? You know, maybe that's a character characteristic of this particular design. Um, you kind of have to think about that, like... This isn't going to be the only car I'm going to make. You know, I can make several other cars. This is just one attempt at trying to, trying to get this design to work. And sometimes, I mean, happy accidents like that work. It happen, like this happen. You know, and sometimes you got to invite it, because that becomes part of, you know, livery editing sometimes. So we want. I'm, what I'm looking at here is this right here. I'm looking at this area here because I want to definitely kind of carry this on to the front of the car. I just want to make sure that all of that's kind of even. So now we're getting to that ugly part right there where Gran Turismo is going to want to do that kind of funky thing, which, I mean, it doesn't look terrible from up here. I just don't like that it does it like that. I mean, I guess there's no other way to get lay that decal on there realistically. Um, but it should be, if it's going to follow along with what we got going on in the front, it should be kind of, or with that other line, it should be kind of like spaced out there for this portion. What I can do is once I get to the um, part that's, when I, once I get to this part, what I'll probably realistically do is cover all those lines there and just make another because we want it to continue to the front end here. So let's try changing the color of this decal to yellow. And we'll just do alternating lines like that. I just wish that line would sit straight. I mean, it looks fine from here. It looks fine enough from here. I just don't like what it looks like from up here. I mean, let's see if we can get it to to do what we want it to do. So it just looks a little neater. Doesn't look so warped. Maybe, maybe just doing slight like rotations right now. I'm trying to get it to like do something that looks halfway decent I mean that might be shit that doesn't look good Mouse. 
see, and now it's also kind of running into that other line. I mean, I'm just going to have to mess with that white line, I think. Or I'm just going to have to skew this line a lot more. Let's try skewing it and see if it, it'll do what we want it to do. Oh, there we go. Not doing what I want it to do. Not at all. Maybe like that. It's gonna be tough. All right, let's let's delete this layer. Let's duplicate this layer. Let's move it above this layer, and then we'll drag it down. How that changes anything? It doesn't really change anything. <laughs> They're pretty much all duplicates of each other, anyhow. It's just that now we've got that white layer that's finishing out that part. I kind of like that. But then we got to get this to sit. I would like to at least try to get four lines out of this, but it's every time I try to skew this line, it's going to run into that other line. It's going to do that weird thing on this part of the arrow dynamics that I don't like. But that gives us that gives us that shape. I mean, that's that's pretty close. I don't There's not really any way to fix that part right there. Let's see what it'll let us do on the other. I, I don't even know if I want to put layers down there. I'm also looking at how this is going to initially flow to the rear of the car. I mean, what would be great is if we could get this yellow line to go to the top of, of the wheel arch back there. See where the wheel arch uh, f is flat and then goes to a curve. I, I kind of want this top yellow line to graze that. Let's see. Let's see if I can get that line to do that. I don't, I don't think I can though. Like I want it more up here. I want it to kind of like, you know, kind of go here. Maybe that's what I should work on. Maybe I should just work on these lines first and then I'll figure out the maroon later on. So realistically, I would kind of want that there. And then uh, let's duplicate that. 
flip it. And then we want it to go back down, maybe. Kind of like that. Yeah, I kind of like that. I mean, because then it'll meet up with the rear tail lights like that. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's... Let me try to get that to meet up. Can I get you to meet up and become friends? Be friends, ends. You're, you're one and the same because you're duplicates of each other. that bridge once we get to it see that's and maybe if we can get it to do it that to behave like that that high up we won't have this funkiness down here when we get to this line down here um let's see if i can move this guy up to run parallel to that line or somewhat parallel to that line Maybe we, man, no, we can't do that. And that way we fill a little bit more of this maroon spot. Maybe run them equidistant. Let's fix this line because I don't like how this is doing this. Definitely explore. Should definitely really, really just like explore this whole. Oh, I like that because now, it, now it's gonna, now it runs. Now this line terminates right at the back end of. The, I always use the rear, the rear tail lights as my, a good point to terminate lines. Just seems like, you know. A really natural spot for lines to terminate is right there at the rear, uh, the rear tail light. Um, just disregard the maroon line right now because that's that's not none of these lines are set in stone right now. So, but I'm trying to avoid this little Nike thing that's happening here. This kind of puma swoosh. I'm trying to avoid it right now. That just tells me that like I don't want to be anywhere near that part of the car once we get to that part of the design. I th it might be unavoidable, but we can at least lessen the distortion that's happening there so that it looks a little bit more intentional rather than I'm having to deal with the constraints that this function gives me. So we can probably meet that line up there which isn't bad. Might even be able to be a bit thicker. And maybe we can get it to do something like that. Maybe. That means we're gonna have to thicken that line. The original, the, orig the originating line is gonna have to get a little bit thicker just to meet up with that guy. That looks fine. Once again, I'm trying to make sure I'm kind of dodging this, this area down here. But then I don't want it to look too... Too out of place there. Nope, don't like it. Cancel. Goes back to where it goes. <laughs> Alright, well. Let's go back to this line. And uh, I do like how thick it is there, though. Maybe we can make it start getting thicker. So that I don't have to mess with that line there. We'll just make it thicker back here. 
will we'll make it so that it kind of looks like it's increasing itself once it gets to that point. But the actual increase happens within um, that wheel well where we won't see it increasing itself. I mean, that looks pretty. That looks pretty good so far. Now, let's go to the problematic line, this one down here. Let's try to get that line further up here. And in order to kind of cons... Maybe we can make this line bigger, thicker. Can we get, even get it to go all the way back to the back? You can, but it's going to go. It's not going to curve. The more that we, it looks like the more that we make this big, the. The harder it becomes, the straighter it becomes. You know, it could make sense. Get it straighter. Son of a bitch. God, this is a, this is a pain in the ass. <sighs> All right, let's look at these layers. Let's try to let's mess with the maroon. I'm just tired of dealing with I'm tired of dealing with these gold lines. So realistically, now we're looking at kind of about right there. Let's look at the layer below that. Just this one. We'll move it up and try to get it to play well. But it doesn't look like it's going to want to. <laughs> Christ. Okay, let's duplicate this layer. And we'll just move it down. Oh, shit. I'll put it there. Put it like right in here. Oh, that's right. There's 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 a tan layer in there that is causing funkiness. This one, so we can move it up, get it to do our bidding up here. Oh, we can't because now it's below all those other layers. So we're gonna have to move it further up into the hierarchy. So that's above. There we go. So then it's above all the other layers. That, that's looking better. It's, it's not quite. It's not quite what I expected. But once again, this is kind of this is new territory for me as well. So, I mean, um, even someone that is experienced with the system, as someone that's experienced with the system, you can see that, it, you know, even I have issues with it. Which, you know, I don't blame anyone that doesn't want to deal with it because it is. It's a pain in the butt trying to get some of these shapes to behave themselves. When you're dealing with, like, straight lines, and that's why a lot of my cars are straight line designs, it's a lot easier. I mean, you can just lay stuff on top of each other and, you know, Bob's your uncle. Um, with these line, these layer, these designs that deal with lots of stripes that are curved and stuff, this, you know, it just ends up becoming a really kind of 
wrestling act, trying to get all of them to behave the right way. Um, it, you know, it doesn't help that they do, they, they give us enough tools to kind of to finesse stuff. But I mean, I wish it, there were. I wish there were other options. I wish there were more options for um, layers, shapes. I, I don't think they have enough options for layer shapes. It's just really hard to pull some stuff off. Like, I mean, like this. We've been now working this on this now for three hours, and this is as far as we are. It's not very far at all. I mean, but this is something that, I mean, it looks usable. Whether or not I'm really totally happy with it is a completely different story, but I mean, once again, I'm a perfectionist. I like everything to be where it's supposed to be. And, and you know, sometimes, sometimes GT doesn't want to give you that. So you just have to work with what you're given. Now it's starting to kind of look like a McDonald's car. I mean, I don't have, maybe we can make that right. Let's make that white, that tan color. Just so it doesn't look so McDonald's-y Redskins. You know, I'm from Virginia, but I can't stand the Redskins. I'm sorry for anyone that's a Redskins fan, but Dan Snyder's an asshole. And I will not, will not, I will not, this layer this layer's right here I will not support assholiness so F Dan Snyder and F the Redskins I never really was a big football fan anyhow especially when the Redskinettes came out I was just like oh man you guys just there are too many of your assholes around <laughs> No offense to anyone that is a Redskins fan. I'm a huge basketball fan and I love the Wizards who have been having a terrible, 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 terrible um, couple of seasons. I'm hoping that this season will be better, but I don't think it's going to be any better. As much as I love John Wall, I think we need to get rid of him. He's a very, very good basketball player, but... Um, he's one of the best, but his injuries aren't helping us right now. Being injured for two seasons is not, not helping us at all. And I don't blame John Wall for it. But I do, do think he needs to kind of, we need to let go, let go of, let go of them. How am I going to fix that? Uh, maybe we can put a noodle on top of it. Maybe. Give me your macaroni. Can I get it to conform to that other, that other swoosh? Crap. Let's do that. Let's skew it. Skew, 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 skew. I don't need much. Just need a little bit just to cut off that little bit, bitty piece of tan that just makes, is making everything kind of look funky. needs to be thicker than that though crap i keep on pressing the skew button i just wanted to get thicker there we go once we get up to that arrow part i'll show you how i'm gonna fix all of the mess that's probably happening right now up in that area that real this is definitely starting to become one of the more involved designs i've done 
but I'm doing it for you guys. I'm putting myself through hell so you guys don't have to. Um, once I'm done with this, I'll put this on the livery store. If anyone wants to download it, they can. Uh, I don't know if you're going to want this mess on your car, but... but. Uh-oh. There's some basketball, basketball streaming in the other room right now. I wonder... Hmm... I'm still wondering about this little bump here and whether or not I like it or not. I mean, I kind of like it because it makes it wrap around the side, back side really nicely. Uh, but whether or not it's doing what I want it to do is another thing. It's a whole other matter. I mean, that looks, that looks pretty all right. Let me, let me just for shits and giggles put a sponsorship sticker on the side just to see what we're working with as far as, as those stickers are concerned. So let's look into our favorites and let's, let's look at our main sponsor who is um, Camel. Now, for the side of the car, I mean, that one would make sense. Since this is in a straight line, we might not be able to run that as parallel to that as the curve. I mean, I would think you know, remember that they are dealing with a company that wants to sell their wares to people watching TV at home. So we want to make sure that their design is unobscured and it's the largest thing that we see. <laughs> Realistically, we probably will not be able to fit the camel motif onto the side here um, because once we start covering once we start covering whoops um, once we start covering those sport lines it's it's gonna get really like busy and I don't like that I don't think anyone does I mean, that's, that's pretty close to what I would probably do. I mean, I do that, with, I do this with every car, but it's kind of, it's, it's got a purpose. I would like, it would be nice if that could sit along here. Can I get it to like look even? I'm just trying to put myself in also in the shoes of someone that is laying this livery down on a car. Like I said in yesterday, as much as this car might look like it's a stock Atenza or six, I guess this is a Mazda six here in the United States. Um, You know, it's it's really different. It's it's incredibly different. I mean, it's it's based on the chassis of the Mazda Atenza, but it's not quite the Mazda Atenza. Um, you know, it's got lots of reinforcements when they sell it to whatever race team they're selling it to. You can see that inside the car here. A lot of the times, they come with all of the all the doodads and everything, like you know, roll cages and stuff are already installed. Um, and this is what I was also saying about P 
people that lower their cars after they buy them. Um, when a manufacturer sells you a car, they're not selling you a car like, oh, this car could be better if it was lower or if, you know, we'll just let the customer do that. <laughs> That's not what they're, you know, that's not what's going through their head. As much as you want to think that's what's going through their head, that isn't. What The car that they sell you is, is, is a complete product. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm kind of, I know a lot of people like to put aftermarket parts on their cars and stuff. You're really kind of destroying your car once you start putting aftermarket parts on your car. I mean... You, the car wasn't intended to race, you know, and that's not saying that you can't race a car that you buy from a dealership. You can, if you strip it all down, do all the reinforcement that most car comp most race companies will do and then put the car back together. Um, and that's the same thing with this thing. I mean, it's, it's built, it's a purpose built car for racing. Um, you know, they designed the passenger car first, then took the chassis and made it into a racing car. Um, reinforced it, added body panels where they needed to, and, you know, put all the stuff where they where they wanted it. Uh, so, how does that go into liveries? Well, these cars... These cars... Um, don't usually come painted. Uh, a lot of times what happens is uh, they'll create these cars and because the paint, especially the clear coat, adds, I think, I want to say it's it's almost like 10 pounds worth of weight to the car. Um, race teams will often order the car, you know, the cars that they get aren't don't have any clear coat. Usually they're white, um, and that's it. They don't have anything as far as like, you know, trick paint schemes or whatever. All of that you, all of that design you see on the car, usually is a, a lightweight wrap. Um, I'm, I know people that know racing probably already know that, but you know, your garden variety person probably doesn't know that. Um, so you, when you're doing these livery designs, you kind of have to put yourself in the shoes of the person that's putting this livery on, you know, you want to make it, uh, easy enough for them to apply it to the car without having to like wrestle with it too much. Like, so that, for example, like the side part here, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've seen it happen before where the, where they're put the, well, where they'll put, um, like a sponsorship decal right on a body panel like this where the A is on the door and is also on the back here. Um, they probably would put it so that this little white part here is either on the door or on the panel, but not on both, just because that would just be a pain in the ass to have to deal with like laying it down and doing all the cuts and shit for it and having to like um, meet up, meet it up or match it up on the other side. So they would probably make it more like this where probably more like that where it's real easy for them to to match up whether or not they do it in layers like I'm doing or, or if this is all printed as one layer and then laid onto the car. Um, that's probably where they would put that split. You know, because it just, once you get to like door panels, I don't know if any, have any, any of you guys have had any experience with laying down, um, laying down vinyl on your cars. I know some of you probably have. Uh, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> it's, a, it's like doing tint, but you're doing tint to the whole car. <laughs> and then when you have designs like this, like complicated designs, you're going to have to, you have to match it all up. You want to make it easier, design easy enough for someone to do that once uh, once it comes down to the point where you're, you know, giving this car off to the company that's going to lay down the vinyl. Uh, now, that, the camel looks like it's in a good spot. 
it's it's running kind of parallel to that. It's giving the illusion that it's running parallel to the line underneath of it, all knowing that that line is actually kind of a curve and it will not, in no point during its travel to the back of the car, be a parallel, a line that will be straight enough to be parallel to anything other than um, a line that's shaped like it. This camel decal is is straight, and there's no way they're going to be able to get that. You can already see where the C is and where the L R is. Um, you know, there's a big difference between the two, where the spacing between where it's spaced between you know that and the uh, maroon line underneath of it. So let me try to. I'm going to try to even it out as much as I can, but there's there's only so much I can do. Um, and honestly, no one's no one's going to ever notice something like that. Maybe someone who's designing it would does, would notice it, but um, like I'm doing real, really tiny, tiny taps on R R two to to get it to just move just a tiny, tiny bit. It is. It's it's moving just a little bit to the point. Where, no, 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 no. We don't want to cancel it. We want to definitely keep that. That is really close. Very, very close to to matching um, the spacing between the um, the real estate between that white border of the letters and that maroon. It's super close, as close as I can get it with what I have to work with. Um, realistically, I don't think, I don't think I wanna put anything else there, like around in that area. I, um, I'm thinking that any of the other sponsorship decals we put on this car will be put on this area right be, right in front of the front wheel, well, run, or behind the front wheel, where the, excuse me, hold on, um, where that, uh, this ducting for, for the brakes are. I'm gonna probably put like an NGK Let's let's do that already. Let's uh, let's give ourselves some brands to work with here. I never use the iBuck. Maybe we'll maybe we'll give iBuck some representation. Maybe we can put iBuck up here. They're a good, sh they're a good suspension company. And like I said, I'm not trying to harp on a harp on anyone that does enjoy putting thousands of dollars of parts on their car. But I mean, if you're gonna do it, do it right and and do your homework. And you know, I don't, I, I really don't think most you most consumers don't especially like in the car industry, don't don't really give the manufacturer enough um, credit for, for making a complete car. And that's just not the truth. I mean, you look at, and I, I think I mentioned it earlier in another stream, in the other design stream, that, uh, that uh, Volkswagen, I remember... You know, I've been a GTI owner, driver for years. I mean, this might be the first. The current car I have is a, is a, um, let's see, NGK, is a, a Volkswagen Alltrack, which is an all-wheel drive on the station wagon. I just wanted something bigger. I mean, I, otherwise, before that, I was driving Golfs. I had a GTI, several GTIs. And the last car before the uh, before the R32 was a uh, was a um, wait before the Alltrack. I'm sorry, was the R32. So I, you know, I've had my fair share of kind of like high performance Volkswagens. 
But the funny thing is, is that I remember, especially with the GTI, uh, I've had a Mark IV and a Mark III and a Mark II, all three of them. And people would always be like, oh, I'm going to put new headers in the new air box, you know, on it because I'm going to get so much more horsepower. Um, whenever you looked at the numbers of horsepower gain for things like air boxes and stuff, especially in Volkswagens, Volkswagen already puts a real decent high flow, high flow air box on their cars. So it's, it's kind of redundant and almost a waste of money to go out and buy like a K&N, uh, k and like, uh, forced or, uh, what's it called? Uh, what do you call them? Uh, there's intakes that people put on their cars. Um, what company? I like Michelin. I've always been a big Michelin fan, man. Although the Dunlop looks nice. Uh, you know what? Let's go with Dunlop because it goes along with the yellow. I know it's a stupid way of kind of deciding what type of tires you want to put on. I'm doing this also because I'm thinking of what um, manufacturer car, like tire manufacturer sponsorship stickers I want to stick on this thing. You wouldn't put a Dunlop, Dunlop stickers all over a car that has, you know, Goodyear tires on it. Um, but anyways, what I was saying was that I kind of like the Michelin too, though. Maybe those Michelins. Nah, we'll do those Michelins. I like those. Uh, and let's change the wheels over to something a little tougher. Those Ankies are nice. I do like those, though. That's, really, that's a really nice look. So what, what were those Ankies? never use these tires. Let's use these wheels because I've never used them before. Uh, let's give them a color. Let's see what colors we can do with it. Red? No. Uh, let's go with our gold and see if that works. No. No. And black. I think black's fine. So what I was saying was that um, I know everyone would go get intakes for their cars and they would um, the other thing they would change would be the headers, uh, thinking that they would get more power by going with aftermarket headers, and and this is not the case. Um, Volkswagen actually puts already gives you a high flow airbox, um, and I know especially for the R32, it was the airbox was a real point of contention because people would be like. Oh man, you need to get an intake. You need to get a cold air intake. But if you looked at the performance numbers of the cold air intake that came with the car, they were almost even if not better than like your leading cold air intake that people would throw on the car. Not saying that if you didn't do, if you did forced induction or something, you would definitely need to have to get a new air box. Um, that just makes sense. But if you were staying, um, if you stayed with the uh, the NA engine that was in the car and didn't do any forced induction with it, like the what came stock with the car was really the best option that you had. People that were going to cold air intakes um, were, were weren't seeing many. Uh, weren't seeing much of a performance uh, gain from having to put the cold air intake on. So, so what the, what's the point of buying it if it's not going to improve your car any? There's no reason to, to buy it. But people just want to spend money on useless things like that. <laughs> you know, that's fine. You know, whatever. Just understand that you're not going to, you know, you're not going to be able to race... You're not going to be like, um, ooh, that's really nice. It's actually very nice. You're not going to be like, you know, racing against cars, um, like sports car, like real true, like racing cars, <laughs> because you put an intake on your car. 
is often a lot of times um, the stock airbox did better than most uh, aftermarket parts. And people would always be like, I don't understand. Why am I not? Why why am I not getting any performance out of them? Like, well, because because Volkswagen already gave you a decent part. <laughs> why are you messing with it? You know, the same goes with the headers. The headers were the big one. Everyone, like, oh, I'm going to change the headers. We come to find out the Vol the headers that Volkswagen already put on the car are perfect. You know, there was there was no header system that was made for um, the R32 or any of the GTIs that are even close that perform even close to as good as the one that comes stock with the car. You know, and you also have to remember that. They designed the cars so that they can be run as uh, passenger cars. You know, they're that's what they are. They're passenger cars. You know, don't try to trick yourself thinking that you're gonna, you know, win, win, win like races with the car, the stock, or some car that's stock that was was stock and then, um, that you put a bunch of aftermarket parts on. Unless, like, you do some really heavy, heavy, heavy modifications. I'm not saying that you can't. I'm just saying that it's it's pretty unlikely for <laughs> for someone who's just coming off the street to you know take their street car like a the Civic for God's sakes. That that car has been like abused with the whole aftermarket community. Talk about a car that people just throw parts on that don't really help it too much. Too much. I think the one that gets me the most is uh, aftermarket exhausts. You know, and this is speaking from someone. This is the, coming from the mouth of someone who's put um, quite a few aftermarket exhausts on his cars. The only thing that you do with that is you, you increase your noise level, and that's it. <laughs> you may get like a five horsepower difference, but you're really you're really kind of kidding yourself if you're thinking you're you're really you know adding like seven thousand horsepower to your car it's just not happening sorry <laughs> sorry to burst your bubble <laughs> okay so you know we already have these places we already have those parts let's see where are they it's that one it's that one one it's just two of them right so maybe we can just move those up in the hierarchy and not have to deal with putting more decals down so let's move this up we're gonna fix we're gonna now fix its spillover oh shit now it fits okay so maybe we can just move it forward and just have it do this type of thing uh that will give us the dimensions for that guy shit okay I'll cancel editing Put it back down in its hierarchy. <sighs> that doesn't look like it's straight either. So now we have to worry about this portion of the car. Once again, once we get this whole side part of the car finished, the other parts can the other side's gonna be real real easy to do. We just need to solidify our design as soon as as soon as we can so so we can start making decisions for um, stuff like the rear and the front of the car. Okay. So let's put let's put a layer above this one. And we'll make it our maroon color again. Now we're going to address this this mess up here. Maybe if we can get enough to cover that guy there. I want to I want it to cover just a little bit because it looks like what's happening up in this point is that it's obscuring. That's the end of the noodle obscuring because we've been skewing it so much. 
So we want to try to fix that so that it's a nice even like parallel line rather than being a blob because that's what it's turned into. That's what it's turned itself into is a big blob. So we'll duplicate that layer and then we'll move it down. And we'll take that layer and fix it so it isn't so blobby. Yeah, I mean, if you want to update, if you want to, if you want to waste the money on unnecessary upgrades, go ahead. Feel free. If it makes you feel like you're going faster, keep on doing it. But honestly, the best, the best investment you can make in your car is sending yourself to driving school. And I will always use the girl who f I raced against in an autocross race with my 275 to 300 horsepower R32 getting beaten out by a girl who was driving a Taurus that she had rented because someone had smacked into her car. Uh, she was fast regardless of whatever car she was driving. She was really fast. Um, she just knew her way around the car. And it didn't matter what she was driving or what was in it. She was just fast, period. Everyone at the track knew her that she was fast. Real cool girl, man. But she was fast and she knew it. She knew she was faster than most everyone else around the track. She almost... The reason why she brought the car out was kind of to rub it in their face. Everyone's face that she was fast. And she was literally like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to beat all of you guys, and I'm going to do it in a rental car. <laughs> and she did. She's super fast, man. Okay, let's see if we can get it. I just need a kind of an idea of what this, this noodle is doing, and I can't do it when it's the same colors. We want to get smaller and we want to get larger. I had a huge crush on that girl, too. Who wouldn't want a girlfriend that was a good, an amazing race car driver? I hope she went on to. I know she wanted to go pro, I think, at some point to some degree. I hope she did. I hope she went pro. She definitely had the chops for it. All right. There we go. So those three stripes are pretty even. I mean, I could probably do the same thing to mask that stripe down there. I wonder if that's going to change... Let's duplicate this layer. Let's just test and see what happens if we take that stripe and bring it down here. Maybe we can fix this mess that's happening down here without it affecting its look. I am bet I feel better about it being kind of like that. It just looks cleaner. <sighs> Do I like it? I mean, it's it's a it's pretty tough looking. And we still have a lot of real estate to put um, to put our sponsorship decals. I probably won't put too many on this one. 
I would like a Mazda sticker on the side, so let's do that. See, we had some nice ones that we downloaded. So, where did we put those? Did we put those in the collection? Did we add them to motive to our automotive section? I don't think we did. So, let's do this Mazda Speed one. Maybe we can ride this. Ride this line here, maybe. Maybe that will fill that empty space, the negative space we have going on there. I don't, I don't know if I like it because it's kind of running. <sighs> I mean, it doesn't look bad. Doesn't look terrible. I think I could live with that. The more I look at it, I think the more I like it. The fact that it doesn't run totally parallel with the camel is kind of cool and it's kind of annoying, but I'm not terribly disappointed with how that looks. I think I can live with that. I'm also trying to avoid putting anything down in this in this area back underneath where the exhaust pipe is. Realistically, I I don't since that's the exhaust up the exhaust uh, pipe. It's gonna probably get blackened and get carbon all over the place. So I mean, realistically, I don't think anyone would put a part of a design down there. They definitely wouldn't put any sponsorship stickers down there just because they have to. I mean, I think the real car does have some sponsorship stickers, but they're definitely not near the exhaust pipe. Um, I think for the Sago, this design, we could probably probably not do that. What we can do also is put... What's nice with having Michelin as our tire sponsor is that we can put the Michelin man who doesn't take a whole heck of a lot of shape space in order to Michelin man's coming for you I also like how that white looks on this on this background here on that maroon and that almost fits in there like it was meant to be there we'll give him a little bit of angle so it doesn't spill too much on that that other part of the car. I don't, I don't like his angle though. Let's see if we can get him back to being straight. Once again, it doesn't matter how you align this this side because obviously we're just going to copy it on the other side. So it's not going to be a huge deal. And maybe we can put a Michelin sticker, like an actual Michelin sticker, somewhere. Somewhere like around here. It's, it's a little close to the other sticker, but I don't think, I don't think anyone's gonna really mind. Maybe we can ride this one We'll use the back end of this other area, but like I said, I'm going to try to avoid. I'm going to try to avoid the exhaust pipe. Mm. I like Liquid Molly a lot, but let's try Mobile One. We never use Mobile One. I at one point in time was a big fan of mobile. 
one before I before I discovered Liquid Molly. But then again, Mobile One doesn't really make Mobile really doesn't make. I mean, I think they do make the um, gray oil that I need to run in my car, but Liquid Molly, Liquid Molly does uh, does make a really, and they do make um, the formula for which you should be putting into a Volkswagen for oil. And I'm not making any sense of just between thinking about this and trying to talk to you guys. Mm. What other logos do we have here? Bridgestone, now we're ready to go. We already have a sponsor for spark plugs and we have a sponsor for suspension and we have a sponsor for uh fluids um so realistically they probably wouldn't be uh we can use them all because they make filters though i don't think they make filters for japanese cars it's mostly it's mostly german cars so maybe we shouldn't use that that's uh the more more might be kind of hitting our limit there. What else do we have? Pia. Mm, stop tech is always one that I like to do. And they, they're pretty universal, so we'll put a stop tech sticker there. I've had stop tech. Um, I use stop tech pads actually. I think I put them on this car. The, the, um, my current car, I think, has stop tech pads on it. Did I put stop tech? I've used them on my R32 before. And I've used stop tech uh, rotors before. Those are the aftermarket parts that actually do kind of count on you, like your brakes. Um, not saying that the manufacturer doesn't put decent brakes already in your car, but. I think they're brakes that are better than uh, what comes stock. And then suspension is another one. It's just like, you know, unless you want to drive around in a car that feels like it's, a, you know, sitting on a piece of two by fours or sitting on two two by fours, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't totally, uh, I wouldn't. Totally just stick with the stock suspension that came with a car. <laughs> you know, it's kind of one of the big reasons why I don't like the idea of people using the M3 as a daily driver. I'm just like, you know, you, you know that car really isn't made for comfort. It's made more for uh, racing. Not that you can't drive an M3 as a daily driver. That's a fine daily driver. If if you like your back being fucked up by the time you're done going wherever you want to go. That's the old man in me, I guess. Tag here has been one that I like. I've been using a lot lately. But I don't think it's going to fit in that spot. I wish I had like a circular... I could just put the NGK, NGK one there. Let's see what happens when we put the NGK one there. And that's what really realistically it will probably fit better in that corner right there is the NGK. And then let's add a tag here one on the side. And I think that might do us for this side of... Uh, side for if we can get it big enough um no let's try another tag design that doesn't say tag here underneath of it like one of these guys just 
just like I just like the green and the red and the white. It's very nice looking. Just don't want to make it too busy. But I also want to make it sure it looks like this car is well sponsored. Alright, it's uh it's starting to look the part. Um And for anyone that is doing this, this is probably the most time intensive part is trying to figure out this one side. You know, obviously, like I said, we're going to repeat this on the other side, so it won't be as hard. Um, we have to do the front still, which is going to be pretty easy and the back, which can be easy unless I decide to make it really complicated. Uh, but for the most part, we are pretty much settled on this design. I mean, it looks pretty good. I mean, the more I look at it, the more I like it. I mean, that's pretty slick looking. Uh, realistically, I gotta figure out what the color I wanna make the uh, the spoiler and the rear spoiler and the side mirrors but I think at to this degree it's looking pretty pretty good it's definitely probably one of the tougher designs I've done in my life let's see if we can let's see if we can add a gradient to that camel like we have on the front just so we can get that uniformity. So we're gonna add a layer below that because we know that we want it to sit below the camel, but on, and also below these lines. So maybe, maybe we should actually put it down here somewhere so that we know that we're not going to going to obscure anything that's below it. So we're going to add a layer below, put it on the left side, choose a decal. We're going to go for the gradient, same gradient, which is the circle gradient. Where did you go? Oh, shape gradient is what we're looking for. We can we find, is there something that's a little bit more? Nah. Maybe we can use this one. make it big. Nah, I don't like that. Let's do a circle one. Add layer below. It's much less intrusive. And then we'll take that layer. And we'll move it down far enough so that it doesn't, doesn't impede with any of these other layers. Looks like it's going to have to go all the way down below at least this point here because this looks like that's a side triangle, that's a front triangle, so it has to go here, right? No. Still showing up, so maybe we have to move it one more layer below here. There we go. And maybe we should move it down just a little bit more so that it isn't quite. I want it to just be, we just want to feel it. We don't want to actually see it too much. We just want to feel that that gradient is happening just to kind of mimic what we have going on here on the hood. It's a real subtle effect, but it does make that camel pop a little bit more. Let's take a look at it with our crosshairs. Um, I, I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. I mean, it looks pretty. 
pretty much looks the part there. So. All right. So we have this side done, I think. So we're going to save it. We've already named it Camel, so save. We won't put it on the car just yet. So we're not finished with it yet. But it does look good. I, I'm pretty proud of myself for kind of braving this whole process because I really wasn't sure how this was going to happen and how this was going to work. I've looked at a lot of these liveries and, and tried to figure out how people are doing them. Um, and it's tough. It's tough, like I said, because you have to kind of, you know, you're working with what with tools that you have and with what limited tools that you have. And uh, it can be very, very difficult to kind of wrestle with the livery editor. It can be really easy and it can be really difficult. I mean, it is as difficult as you want to, you know, make it. But I try to make it as, as easy as possible. Let's look at where we're at in um, decal count. So we're at 65 decals, which isn't bad. You know, I think we could probably get away with doing um adding minimally to that count maybe we'll end up at like somewhere around 150 to 170 for the whole body um but it's uh it's coming along it's definitely f way further than we had before we st when we started today I do like what it looks like from back here. It's, it's a very nice, it's very nice back there. Yeah, I can live with this. I can definitely deal with this. All right, let's um, let's conclude for the day. I think that'll that'll do us for today. Um. We'll finish the rest of this tomorrow. Um, I am going to, I have, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've arranged my YouTube page so that um, everything is pretty neat. I'm going to keep all of these liveries, these livery um, live streams in one category so that if anyone has, wants inspiration or try to, is trying to figure out something that I'm doing um, to get these liveries to, behave the way that they're supposed to um it, hopefully with me organizing them into one playlist you can um you know just go through all you won't have to go through all my videos in order to find all the delivery um delivery the videos that have anything to do with delivery design um eventually i would like to like i, I mean keep on saying this but eventually i would like to do like a nice edited piece that's like 15 minutes long um, but like I said, with the, uh, time constraints I already have with, uh, streaming and then coming up with all the elements for the stream, it's, it's been really tough. Um, the more I stream and get used to the, um, process that it need, I have to go through in order to make all these streams possible, um, that, that whole process is getting, all oh, that whole thing is getting shorter and shorter every day because I'm getting more and more used to, to doing this and hosting the stream. Uh, I'm hoping that the FI races don't show up this week because then it means we might have to abandon, abandon this little series. Um, but I would like to continue to work on it. And, uh, I'm definitely going to finish this one before we start a new series, a new season. I'm hoping I can have the opportunity to finish this, this car. I mean, I don't think we have much more to do. This is probably about maybe one more stream worth of work, um, if that. Because like I said, all we're going to do is take everything that's on this side and just mimic it on the other side. We're going to just duplicate it on the other side, and Bob's your uncle. Uh, I think 
for the most part, though, that will be it for today. Uh, oh, and another thing that I'm doing, I know I've been kind of touting the whole uh, Halloween stream. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you, my Gran Turismo fans or my Gran Turismo family is watching it. Um, I mean, I, I am getting viewers on it. And, and I've kind of, I kind of want to finish the game now. So I'm not going to just make it a Halloween thing. I want to actually finish the game because I've never finished it before. And it kind of gave me the idea that I might start doing streams on other video games. Um, not that I don't love Gran Turismo because I do. This is like, oh God, what's that? I love this game. You know, there's, there's, this is my favorite game and this will always be the central theme of this channel. So don't worry that I am doing, um, video game stuff because it's it doesn't mean that I'm going to like abandon Gran Turismo. I'm definitely going to make Gran Turismo is is the main focus of this channel. Uh but I do like playing other video games and I think I will probably continue playing other video games um that aren't Gran Turismo um just because you know I'm a gamer, man. I it's just the thing I do. Shit, now that is crap. That is now not where I want it to be. Ah, fuck it. We'll fix it tomorrow. <sighs> yeah, we'll delete that. Um, but I think in the future, what I'm going to start doing is I'll, you know, grand this stream will definitely be, will, won't change. It'll stay, uh, you know, at this three to seven time spot. Um, time slot at least during this whole pandemic you know I've got I have a um, an excess of time so so it isn't it kind of behoo behooves me to um, you know use everything I have available to, to like kind of maximize my this is Seriously, the only time I get to play video games during the day, so, um, so I'm going to continue to play different video games, but it just at a later time, because like I said, I don't think everyone, sorry, I'm just trying to fix this. I don't think everyone, you know, wants to watch me play whatever I play other than the Gran Turismo, and then maybe some of you guys want to, you know, I noticed that maybe... S I'm hoping that some of you guys play other, some, you know, I play Red Dead Redemption 2 is like one of my favorite games. I'm hoping that, you know, I can bring some of you guys over to play some of that with me. Uh, because I'm, I'm looking for other people to play games like that with because I just don't have, I don't, I don't have the network to do, to play those games. Some of them I need to have other people to play in order to, uh, get past certain parts so like Grand Theft Auto I, I definitely need a crew to run to run uh, to run uh, some of the uh, sorry I'm just I'm trying to think here to run some of the, the heists that I need to do to finish to make millions of dollars <laughs> um I'm running into a problem here. Sorry, when I get into the delivery editing mode, this is like it needs to be beat above. It needs to be above one of these layers here. Sorry, I'm just trying to fix this little mishap because I don't want to have to deal with it tomorrow. When we go, when we come back, um, maybe it should go here. No, it needs to go be able to above the noodles. So we need it to kind of, sorry. Let me 
get real quiet here because I'm really concentrating. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but what I was saying was that, you know, maybe some of you guys would want to place, you know, something like Red Dead Redemption or something. I don't know how I'm going to move this layer so that it doesn't... Shit, if I go like that, it's going to show up above everything else. But I need it to... I need it to not do that. So it has to go below all of this. And then maybe... Crap. I think I may have worked myself into... Well, you know what? What I could do is make that gradient smaller so it's not running into that tan part. There we go. I didn't want the gradient to be that big anyway. Where is it? Show me it again. So maybe we move it over just a little bit. Like that. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, maybe at some point, you know, maybe, or maybe if you're like looking at other games to play other than Gran Turismo, um, I'm going to probably start with like Grand Theft Auto um, once I'm done with Alien. I'll, I'll keep it down to one game. You know, it'll be a two game kind of thing where, like I said, GT, GT Sport will be the main game and then other aside from that, I'll have another game that I'll play and I'll swap it off every month or something like that just to keep, just to keep the variety up and stuff, you know, anyhow, I'm just looking at this and spacing out. I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Uh, later on tonight, um, probably around 10 ish, 10 o'clock, we'll do, uh, alien isolation. Hopefully... Um, hopefully we can make it further than we are. I mean, we're actually not too far. And, and like I said, it's, it's a really cool game. So, you know, if you're a fan of, uh, of Alien and that whole thing, or a sci-fi fan, or maybe you just like watching someone freak out while they play video games, um, you should tune in. It's a really fun, fun, fun game. And it's a fun game, I think, to listen to me or watch me play. Um... Give me a second. I just want to fix one thing before we leave. Just so I feel better about myself. I'm going to fix this yellow shit back here. Oh, that's good. Done. Alright, now we're all even. Anyhow. Enough, enough dicking around. We will be back tomorrow, like usual. Same bat time, same bat place. Um, I hope to see you guys uh, there tomorrow. And um, thank you so much for being a part of my day. I'm hoping that I was a good part of your day. Uh, we're going to save this out. Save. And join us tomorrow when we, uh, we will finish this delivery off. And hopefully... Distributed, distributed amongst the Gran Turismo crowd. And if you're one of the people that want to maybe download this, download this livery afterwards, I will show you how to do that and how to apply it to your car because I don't think we've ever gone over that either. So um, I'm really kind of I want to hit all of hit all of the marks of um, the whole livery process and putting delivery onto the car is probably the main part of that whole process. So, uh, and then I'll show you how to share it and, and do all the other fun shit. Anyhow, this is our project. We're almost finished with it. It's looking pretty sexy. I like the stripes. Just a big fan of stripes. And, uh, I'm glad you guys sat and watched me do all of this, and I'm hoping that it helped one of you guys um, design 
the sports car of your dreams. But without any other ramblings from me, I want to say uh, thank you for your patronage. Thank you for your friendship. And thank you for joining me through this part of um, this journey. Um, everyone have a fantastic night. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And I will see you all tomorrow or some of you I will see you later on tonight um, when we play Alien Isolation. Uh, good night. And, uh, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.